Well, let's start from the beginning. Just just open us up. Yeah. And we'll ever got. Welcome to You Won't Hate It. We look at life through the lens of pastors at the length of a cigar. I'm Josh. I am Ryan. I'm Floyd. I'm Joe, and this is the second take. Uh, so, uh, what what are you gonna ask? Okay, the question. You had a question. The question is: Is I was just thinking. We have what's been the talking, convers- by the way, for like twenty minutes, <laughs> but just, we may have lost it all. So we'll right. see. What is a conversation that if oh. you walked in on, you'd be like, "That's right, I'm good." Like it would be easy for you to step away. No one noticed. You're not making a big to do of it. You're just like, that's just not oh, interesting to me. We're making a big to do of it. There's yeah. no way around. Yeah, it. Yeah, if I'm it. stepping away from Stomp. a conversation, I want everyone to know yeah. that I think it's I like boring. It. Yeah. yeah. So you know, at parties, we we've, we've been going to a lot of different parties, a lot of different things, and then you just walk in and people are talking about something like, "Cool, all right, I'll mm. uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over here to the when charcuterie." Any time, this is a personal pet peeve. I've let I I have. I have stopped trying to change the world in it because I seriously want to change the world in it. Anytime someone is self-promoting, I just, I can't. I want out so fast. It feels so slimy and gross and they're trying to get something for themselves. Like, you don't ever do this, which I like. But if you were like, oh, that guy's a record label? Like, let me get over there and be a... Well, you know, I do play a little bit of ditties myself, and if you've heard, <laughs> have you heard this one song that I wrote? You would have like, left uh, LA. You would have left LA in five seconds. Yes, I can't because it do wasn't it. it wasn't sneaky at all. Nope, it wasn't remotely sneaky. I it think it's the right trashiest, there. like least amount of class, most uncouth. I think it's just the worst, and the fact that you're okay with it, yeah. I'm like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's your life. Just like, look at me. I need to get stuff for me. I'm like, just get out. I attended I a Bible study in Hollywood in the, at the church. It literally had a no networking sign like everywhere. I'm yeah. like, I even thought, well, oh, that's sad. That is that's sad that you had to, you had to actually had to put crap. it up as Was there it signs. there before you started? Wow. Or <laughs> yeah. I had nothing to offer. It, it said Joe <laughs> in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had nothing to offer, so I was like, hey, <laughs> that was guy. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you want to put me in something? <laughs> no? Okay, whatever. Uh, I, did, yeah. I did have a guy talk me up one time and tell me we were at, it was some lame premiere of a Christian movie. No offense, Christian movies. But anyways, and he talked me up, and it was like first couple weeks in L.A., and I'm like, this guy, wow, he's a big deal. Then he handed me his card, and it had perforated edges because he printed oh, yeah. it at home. Yeah, yeah. he had his own. <laughs> it's the best he could do. That it was funny. definitely one of these, like, like oh, oh. That is actually really funny. It's just deflating. It's also, right. I think it's smart. It's budget-friendly. <laughs> Cards are like a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how fiscal this guy's being. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you bet. Uh, uh, Floyd, you got one? A conversation? I, a lot. There's a lot of conversations that I don't want to involve myself in. Usually, st- I, I don't like to talk about stuff about the end times. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't like that. because a good promotion people, for yeah. a Wednesday night service. Yeah. Dude, <sighs> love it. 6.30 well, p.m. on Wednesday nights. Tune Wednesday in for night. I mean, you know I've never been there. I'm just yeah. saying. I don't, like, I don't mind it in... Well, I, I guess that could be said. I don't mind having any conversations with people that are intellectual and actually have a base of knowledge about the topic. Any topic, though, that people think that they know, but after spending three seconds with them, you can tell that they don't. Mm. Those, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Because you can't, there's no way to say this nicely, you can't convince an idiot that they're wrong. So people. I I disagree. Nice. That was fun. I actually appreciate it. (laughs) I appreciate it. It's on his business card. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So basically, yeah, anything that's regarding um, people who are, not really open to conversation or listening and mm. the idea of <laughs> oh <laughs> I, like it. I thought that was like a sarcastic it. no we it was all not, have this it it's, all the, in, it's all the same thing mind. no i it's, liked it that was all good. three of us there's thinking of the same guy that you sat well, with for two hours recently no mine was oh. mine was thinking topic Jesus. and when you said it was delivery i go oh what's funny is i was thinking topic also yeah. more than like but again i can i do think it's interesting the difference just in personalities like, this is a four now where yeah. he's like, no topic is off limits. <laughs> as long as you have a caring, open heart do you want to, have to a, the world. Do you want to have a conversation? You yeah. just want to talk at Exactly. Yeah. And well, so it's I kind think of it's funny, funny, especially when you're in settings where you're meeting people for the first time, and then you just end up talking about anything and everything. That so like, are, that are like you a, a moment in your mind. No. Are you yeah, like this last trip? Are you guys small people. talk people or not small talk people? Uh, I know I'm, Joe. I don't mind small talk, but I prefer like deep conversation. So sure. moving that towards that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Floyd. Yeah. It's got to be. There's got to be an intellectual. End in, there's got to be an end in mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if the end is simply the end of the elevator ride, I'm mm-hmm. cool with that. Oh. Yeah. But there has to be. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in the Tell face. Josh. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, so good. Yeah. Like I, I'm not like Joe's bad about it. Like Joe won't. Uh, 
but on an elevator, I'm like, yeah, well, I'll have a quick conversation. You're, small talk? Ba- you're bad at something. No, no, he knows. He's, no, yeah. I hate Oh, you hate If someone says, how's the weather? Oh, yeah. I'm like, had a relative die? Just curious. Maybe you want to yeah. talk about it? I'm here for you. <laughs> yeah. I just want to move this into something more meaningful. I can't do the how's the weather talk. Yeah. Joe gets on the elevator and does the fake phone thing. It's like, not. It's not fake. He's true. he's honestly on his phone at all times. The it person is. next to me is like, you know that there's no service. Yeah, in here, right? <laughs> you're not getting anything. Your right? phone's not on. I'm it's, looking at your screen. It's analog, sir. sir. Just <laughs> looking at himself. <laughs> Just uh, I I love small talk. Love it. I mean, love it. Yeah. I want to sit you there. You are and a true extrovert. Oh yeah. Because I think it's fun. Hmm. I just think it's like, I like, I love deep conversations too, but I don't want deep conversations with everybody I meet. You've Sometimes, married the deep conversation woman though. Uh, right. And we have deep conversations. She's, have you ever tried to have small talk with she your wife? She hates small talk. I know. She hates it. I mean, not, I mean like even yeah, like yeah. you'd be like, oh, this is kind of funny. She's like, it is funny. Except for all the people who are dying. Yeah. Overseas. Which is why when we go to parties, it's hilarious. Because <laughs> I will just be like having a ball with everybody. She's in the corner with somebody all night long with yeah. one person. What's funny like, is it, it really is more. Yeah, I'm, I'm a four. But it's, it's less context and more like how the conversation's going, who I'm talking to. Because, like, uh, with people we met uh, on the pastor's retreat, if it's a deep conversation and goes to small talk or, like, something kind of silly or whatever, and it's like, I'm enjoying it, yeah, I can have a good time. As yeah. opposed to, like, oh, no, I don't want to go back to small talk. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. You've changed my laughing. answer. Yeah? He changed my answer. It really is. I think if people are having fun, I don't care what the topic is. Like, yeah. if I walked in, everybody's having yeah. a good time. I don't care what. I'm like... That actually, I'm like, I could, if they're all like laughing about stuff, even if it's the weather, I'm like, I can do that. And that's what mm-hmm. I think I of with small talk. I don't think of small talk as like a, so did you uh, read the news about the polar bear that got out of the zoo? Like, <laughs> no. I don't think of that. I think of like <laughs> in a pub laughing hilarious, talking about stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. That to me is like, is so much fun. I could do that forever. I like also, this. I'm also guarded against. When people set you up with a political statement, oh yeah, I'm always yeah. kind of like, where are you? So I don't where, get political, where are you going with this? Well, yeah. some people they just offer. I got caught just a few of those up. this weekend. This yeah. weekend, uh, multiple different places, but like a lot of people. I don't know. I think just politics are so on everybody's mind right now, mm-hmm. and so there was three separate times at three separate places. People I, were hilarious. I like that people assume you're on. They're like, hey, I like you. You must be what I am. Clearly on, your, on my side. You're clearly on the yeah. same thing. Well, especially and, when it's aggressive comments. Yeah. Well, like, uh, and, and because of being in ministry, people have a natural assumption of where we're going to line up politically that may or may not be accurate. Yeah, pro- I, yeah. The sad part is it probably is accurate. Yeah. Uh, I still don't want to talk about it. I don't. Need, that's the thing. I, I, I think I don't. The reason I don't want to talk about politics most of the time is because most of the time it gets mean. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be mean. Like, I may not like the candidate you don't like, but I don't know why we have to be mean about it. But it's not the person. It's their policy. Yeah, exactly. And we're making everything mm. personal. Sometimes it's the person. That's the hard part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. uh, that was it. That was just the kind of that thought of we were in a lot of conversations this week and weekend yeah. together. Yeah. Just walking in, and I'm almost like, oh, okay. Like, one person's yeah. like, they started with just talking about their grandkids. I don't know. And not explaining, huh. not giving context. Really? They're you like, should, oh, that's, they're like, that's Sarah's. You know my grandson's name. <laughs> oh, oh, I do they're remember like, that. That's, yeah, Sarah's, yeah. that's Sarah's daughter. I'm like, yeah. I feel like I'm five layers deep. Like, I need you to back out. Like, do you, I'm glad yeah. to hear about it. Do you think I know everybody? Oh, no. Do you guys yeah, enjoy yeah. seeing photos of, like, other people's families from oh, their vacation? It. No human on earth wants to see somebody else's pictures. Okay. Yeah. How, much no of, one. how much of a friend? No. Nope. I've got a, they've got 300 photos. All right, who a person with 300 photos? Are they uh, an acquaintance, a friend, a spouse, a family member? Who are you willing to watch that through with? I have so my many thoughts. My I grandmother can't say publicly. No, if it's Any, my grandma, is there anybody? I'll look at them. Oh, okay. Just out of respect. So obligation. For sure. Okay, yeah. so you'll, uh, obligatory. Got yeah. it. My grandparents are dead. Well, then they're gonna have the best photos. That's right. <laughs> now. <laughs> Why'd you do it this in is, that voice? Here's what it is. His, his grandparents are like, this is what hell looks like. <laughs> my oh, pappy's what? dead. <laughs> my pappy's dead. Uh, uh, and right, Taylor yeah. takes like a lot of, um, she has a waste camera, like a Japanese old vintage. Yeah. Waste, and so I, I'll look at those. She takes but pictures of waste. It's, I was actually, I, I, yeah. I was going the other <laughs> way. Rude, I was like, basically nothing she takes is good. It's yeah. just, it's a, just waste a trash camera. camera. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, hmm. Okay. I gotta mention that. Let's, so let's I, shift I to feel your like, idea. and I like Taylor, but I feel like if Taylor were to be like, "Look at all these scenic photos I took," I'd be like, "Oh, wrong tree." Like, get, like, don't. <laughs> I don't want to see. There, there's, That's so boring to me. Yeah. There's a great conversation. Really? So there's, there's like a Yosemite. Oh. There's a great conversation to walk in on, and people are looking around a phone, and one person's showing the vacation, like. Slowly back Oh, yeah. I would, don't, don't go. Don't go, Joe. No. Yeah. you got to see this. I this would, is a rock I, I saw in Arizona. I would 180 that so fast. I would be gone. But this is how I can tell, like, I, I feel like I'm a bad person, is if it's a photo that I'm in, and I go, like, oh, I remember that. Like, Well, of course. Well, that's the narcissist. Every human is pretty narcissistic, like, yeah. whether you think you are or not, mm -hmm. is when, and you know you are, if you're lo if somebody's scrolling through photos, and you're shows up in a group your eyes and they nail no, no. you and you're, they scroll, you're, you're the only one scrolling you're going through at. and they scroll past the photo with you in it you go hey, hey, hey hold whoa, on. Whoa, whoa. what was that last one where was that oh oh let's all <laughs> that was, you, dude, send that to me we are all like what that i don't care that? who you are yeah, yeah. that's what year is that <laughs> yeah exactly. the less They're narcissistic like, you think you are the more narcissistic you probably are interesting yeah. oh, interesting I, we could pick at that but we should we shift could gears. pick at that because uh, the i don't know if ignorance yeah, is I was, I was trying to think what if too. what if I think I'm I know you have more a psychology degree. Somebody that 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 really thinks they're a narcissist that's aware of it. That's probably yeah. less oh. narcissistic than somebody who doesn't think. But they what are about at narcissistic? All. What if they're just a self-aware <laughs> narcissist? Huh? What if they're just like, no, I am. That, uh, you're to probably me, more that's... Nostradamus. This. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, like I, I see sugar. in the future that you're a narcissist. <laughs> no, uh, you're right. I would say I would yeah. I would agree with that. So that, is there's that, something yeah. about there's it, something the more about you it. recognize it, the more you think you are. Is, that's probably is less. that like a definition of it? Like you're. But uh, I don't know if the converse the lack is true. of self awareness, no. or is it just com no, totally that's not stringently true. like don't care if you're aware or not? Do you know anybody that you would clinically diagnose, even though we're not cl clinicians, that you'd say they're clinically a narcissist? Narcoleptic. That, that person that we know personally yeah feels like mean. do you know anybody that you would say clinically you would think is that you'd never say that to him you, we're not cl clinicians what if, what if he says you right now oh i wouldn't disagree with him. okay who's he and who's you because you know what because i'm very <laughs> aware that i'm a narcissist are you referring it to? is fun because i'm looking across the table and it's kind of fun because on camera you have no idea where i'm yeah. looking mm. which by the way i'm very aware i'm a narcissist it means i'm not it means you're not <laughs> yeah there's my hustle <laughs> yeah. no. it, 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 the it doesn't mean you're not it means you're not as much as someone who I doesn't feel like there's think loopholes. at all it kind of feels like the I feel like there's loopholes in all of this like i'm a narcissist like I, I plead guilty and it's like oh it'll be easier on you that's what it feels like i i feel like it's the no but i do think that there is a healthy remember when you've talked about this in counseling when your counselor was like you're a grifter yeah. And you were like, what are you, like an emotional grifter? Yeah, she, no, she said I was a hustler, because I basically, hustler. Like, here's all my things that's wrong with me. I'm very open and vulnerable. Yeah, She's yeah, like, yeah. oh, no, that's just so you won't look at the other That's a stuff. shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like I, that that is true also, that, that you can be like, no, 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 I'm a narcissist. And it's like, well, you're saying that because you really are pretty selfish. And instead of working on it at all, yeah. you're just putting it out there quick. Yeah. So it's kind of fun. That's interesting. Anyway, we had a friend who I don't know 80, if I know anybody who is. I don't, I don't know anybody. Not, I know some people that, like, have some tendencies where you're almost like, like the George Costanza, throw the person down, throw yeah. the old lady down to get out yeah, of the fight, yeah. like so about themselves. I do I know. Still don't know if that would be clinical. I do know like, one I, person who's very, very close. Again, I'm not a clinician, so I would, it's not like I could diagnose it. But I know one person who's pretty darn close. I would never say who it is. Um, I also think people, there are people with I Asperger's and autism. The person, there are people with yeah. Asperger's and autism, and they assume that they're narcissists. I'm like, no. Not one bit. They're not yeah, aware yeah. of you, wow. not because yeah. they're a narcissist, yeah. because they're kind of on the spectrum and yeah. don't read emotional That's views. interesting. Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. Like, so be like, that's yeah, a narcissist. Yeah. I'm like, they're not. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're not ignoring you because they're so great. They don't even know yeah. anything. They don't happening. think right. they're, they're better. They just, this is the way it works in yeah. their mind. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, a super interesting. just black and white. Yeah, yeah, factual. Which I like, and, and I, it's funny. That's got to be a great world to live in. Oh my gosh! You're, this is just the it's way it is. There's the no gray time, area. Though, I guess you don't care that nobody wants to be around you either. At that that's point. my thing. It's not even torture. You're like, it's fine. Yeah. It kind of be nice to have a narcissist around and make me feel like I'm a better person. Why Ooh. do you keep talking about being a bad person? That's the second reference. Are you you're having some problems? What's going have on? Have you met Josh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have think you met me? we think you're like the best person. Oh, thanks, bud. We do. We, we think you're nicer than all of us. I think he the does. narcissism. He, I mean, really does. That's not a very I think big comparison. It's hard to Ooh. delineate. Yeah, I, I'm not a clinician. I don't obviously don't know the defining qualities of someone who's narcissist, other than like it's the same symptoms of brokenness. Like if someone's like my self worth and my value, my identity is in things of this world or whatever or look at me and what i can what i've accomplished I'm like 
I think it's I, more along value, the lines of is it's just all about me. It's, it's not even look at me. Yeah. It, it's it's not. I don't even need your well, approval. There's, it's yeah. There's an expectation. It's so about me. Yeah. There's an expectation that everyone is already. But that's what I'm saying. That could yeah. be someone in the brokenness, right. or it could be someone who's clinically narcissistic showing yeah. the same symptoms. Yeah. You know. Uh, I, what's funny is it's it's. A, I was gonna say like a biblical example, and I'm like, it, most of the rulers in the like, I, I don't sure. think you can be, a, you could be an Egyptian Nebuchadnezzar, like Pharaoh, and yeah. not mm. be a narcissist. I just because from the time you were born, you were called a god. Yeah, mm -hmm. think, you become a narcissist Ramsey, whether yeah. you are or not. I, and I think the same is true for all the cultures who have that. Mm. And I think we see that through time, and they say that one of the the worst things or best things you can do with a narcissist is actually ignore them. Yeah. Don't give well, them fuel. So when they get worked up or when they talk about something. One of the worst things? But then you Yeah, have... because it they if you just go, okay, mm -hmm. and you don't like feed into them, right. they just they're a vacuum. They just constantly right. need um, everyone's energy. They're energy vampires. Uh mm -hmm. and if you don't give that to them, dear See, Lord, they will blow a gasket. The oh, absence of the... response triggers them. Yeah, like it's so it's like a child. because like yes, a tantrum. You said oh, that. so good. You yeah. said that about oh. Pharaoh, but then, like, I think about the Dalai Lama because the ne the the next Ooh, Dalai Lama is is <laughs> chosen when they're a child, correct? Yeah. They are. Mm. So now that that child all is always like celebrated, worshipped almost, mm -hmm. but they don't seem to develop that same narcissistic personality. Probably because they're focusing on a like a philosophical and spiritual life. I'm not even sure. When's the last time we even heard from a dialogue? Like, even honestly. It's actually been a while. I don't yeah. even know. I, are they narcissists? The I don't even know. The current one is pretty old now, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. he's got to be man. Because he was old years he, ago he last old, time yeah. I saw him. Uh, I saw him recently on something. Did you? Yeah. I'd like to see him again. He has I, his own podcast. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Probably does. Uh, he, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. It's about, it's about repentance. It's Dolly Lament. So nar narcissists are bad. Let's get let's so uh, more substance. Go for it. Yeah, do do the first story. I, I was actually really intrigued with this. I had heard mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you're throwing them off. You want to do the Jenkins one, right? Because there's something you above it. No, you said the first one. Oh, I, I don't just make care. Sure he knows. Yeah, yeah. So do the Dallas Jenkins one. Sure. This is regarding what's next for the Chosen. And Dallas Jen Jenkins has announced uh, for five and two just, their just new kids. studio. Just nooks. Jet, yeah. And, and narcoleptic mm -hmm. uh, announces three new shows Nostradamus. regarding the book of Moses, Acts, and Joseph. So this is pretty cool. They were asking, <clears throat> what's next for the chosen? <coughs> uh, it's good. Clear it out. And they were, uh, so he is finally released because there were a ton of rumors apparently. I don't follow this. I just heard this thing. Uh, but he finally announced three shows. The next one is Axe, right? I think that's the next one he's yeah. that he has confirmed. Well, there's two more seasons of The Chosen. I thought it was one more. No, seven seven seasons. And they're wait. I thought they were on six. They, I, they, 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 I have finished. No they idea. have finished filming six, but it oh, has okay. Released. Okay, yeah. okay. And mm -hmm. then there will be one more season that they record and yeah. release. Will they and all be theatrical How does it releases? End? I don't know. Sorry. Well, that, that was the whole point is that they're like, that's why they want to do just Acts the next because yeah. it's like the next thing, yeah, you know? Makes sense. And then he really wanted to do the book of Joseph or the, the, the story Joseph of story. Joseph. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which got me thinking. I was like, that's Joseph's an awesome story. I would not have picked that. So my, my question to you guys was like, what biblical story would you love to see portrayed on film if it was really good? Like what if was, it was something was that looks great. The story of Joseph, what was the other story? Just story of Moses? Was it, was it, Moses? Acts, it was Moses, Joseph, and Moses. So basically okay. it's Paul, Bas well, and Moses basically, will be like a he, few characters in He's short, also three, going with like three part thing. also a lot of content. So I know that they've been accused of taking liberties, so I'm guessing he's going to go with stories that have a lot of content, so there's less liberty. I'm he's guessing. still taking liberties. He Come is. On. He's, but it's, it's, it's you, for... It's, I guess for it's different than making... Mass uh, media productions, you have to. A Nephilim movie. Or a Nephilim It series. probably won't oh, be like a Noah? Nephilim. Because yeah. there's not... You know what I mean? There's just like all that's making it up at Which, that point. I, like I, Noah? That that movie, I watched that again recently. I, I'm I would. I'm not saying it's like a biblically accurate... It was a, it was, it's a good movie. movie. I liked it. That's a I good movie, man. There's some I cool the scenes in that. the way they portrayed certain things, yeah. like the Nephilim and the fall, the angels, and the I, parts of it. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Is that the one with um, Russell, Russell Crowe? Crow. Russell Crowe. Yeah, and, uh, it's a beautiful movie. It's, Mickey it's really goofy. Mickey Rourke plays the uh, Rourke uh, recently. Rourke. Is that He's Mickey the... Rourke? Oh, Mickey Rourke. I thought you said Nikki, and I was like, is that woman his daughter? And then I, I went, know. oh, yeah, no. I don't know who that is. Mickey Rourke is the Mickey Rourke. Is the devil? What is he? No, he's like the pagan. He's the bad guy. He's yeah. 
And I oh, can't that, remember. That, he's the peeps that are judged. He's not judged. playing a character. He's like the leader of the peeps that are judged. I thought I yeah. remember that the Noah th- removed all supernatural elements to it. No, I there was about that? there was not at all. major. There were rock monsters. Oh, dude. Well, those are normal. Ma- I major those, supernatural, supernatural okay. parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rocks are. And I, I actually like the splitting of the, the Dead Sea. Wasn't it wind? Wasn't that Dead Sea? The Red Sea. I'm sorry, the Red Sea. Wasn't the they splitting? Split wasn't the Red Sea? No, bro. That's oh. Moses. I'm, bl- I'm thinking that oh, there was a Moses movie that took all of. Oh, the, I don't remember my the brain. Moses movie. I went Moses. You mean uh, yeah, yeah. Prince of Egypt? No, no. There was a Love Moses that. movie. Prince of Egypt might be one the, best of the best Christian movie ever made. Oh and I'm dead God. serious. Oh, the cartoon so one? Oh. Prince, yes, the animated Prince of Egypt. It took them months to make the scene. Not, is there I'm a not, better? There is. What, what is up? I'll, I'll, I'll wait to see what else. No. Yes, there's, there there's is one no better, better Christian. If you see one. the Matrix, I swear it is. No, but that's not. That's also good. At, that's number three. Uh, we're saying I'll animated. say it's in the top five, but let's go through it. Oh, okay. Wait. I think it's number one. Are you I seeing think... animated movies or no, 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 no Christian, Christian movies? Christian, Christian, movies. Christian movies. movies. Besides facing the giants, so that we'll just take that's well, too that. Too good. Yeah, that one good. sits on a to, like, the handle in the outfield. Uh, shoot, I had it and then it just left. Uh, Constantine is probably number three. Ooh. No one agrees with that being a Christian movie, but I agree. I agree. <laughs> You're right. It's no agrees, not. But I agree. You're so right. It's no, not at all. No one agrees, but I agree. No. It is to me, and it's not one <laughs> bit. Tilda right. Swinton played a great angel. You're <laughs> actually right. The it's theology, not even close to wrong. Christian. A lot. But now you I'm, all I'm understand. Not, okay. Yeah. But I'm, not, I, I'm with you, though. Um, you didn't lose me. It was in my head, and then when you said no, I'm like, it's I not mean, even close to Holy water shotgun movie. shells. That's um, biblical. Well, I mean, yeah. such a good movie. Well, I was just asking about Noah splitting the Red Sea. So we're even. Moses. Uh, no, that's what I was saying. I, oh, yeah, yeah, right. that in there. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm sticking got? with Prince of Egypt. <laughs> that's all you've got. One. Have you ever seen so any so other Christian movie? Have you seen another Christian movie in your life? I had one, and I'm like. There's one that's clearly better. I'm not saying I'm, you, I'm, you're being, I'm being say, facetious, but I think it's yeah, better. yeah. You really do, like honestly. Uh, I enjoyed the other one more. I think this one was more impactful. So I think I enjoyed. I love obviously. Prince oh, of Egypt. oh, uh, uh, the Jesus Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. That's, that's, that's the, the one. That's the more Christian. Has to be. That was the one I, I was. I Why did you help him? Up. I was uh, just, I was wanting to Because he was snapping? Because he was snapping. Yeah. yeah. And, right. and it was going to get weird. Yeah. <laughs> I start rambling. <laughs> you don't want me to ramble. Jesus Caviezel. <laughs> Jesus Caviezel. Jesus Caviezel. Can yeah. you guys even name three other good Christian movies? I'm not, I'm not even trying to be a uh, jerk. I can name other Christian movies. Putting the good in front of it. And by hard. the way, we're saying this is a Christian movie. It's made by Spielberg. We've had this conversation yeah. a lot. It's, wait, what's being made by Spielberg? Uh, the Prince of Egypt. No, right? That's Spielberg. Is it? I actually don't know I who made no it. Idea. Yeah, it's Spielberg. That is, I actually think, I, oh, is it better? Oof. I don't know which one of Passion and Prince of Egypt is better. They're both amazing. I'm trying to think of three other ones that you could say Because they're both, they're both like biblically accurate so and, and solid. Pretty, directors and pretty are Brenda Chapman, yeah. Simon Wells, and Steve Hickner. For what? For Prince of Egypt. Who created it? Who's the, the producer, executive producer? God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, uh, I heard yeah, a, I heard a big debate, and I thought is it, it was DreamWorks. It is and Universal. Oh, yeah, it is DreamWorks. Yeah, DreamWorks is owned by Spielberg. I thought it was a silly argument, but somebody asked. Uh, they were like, "Well, yeah, but the Bible was written by you know all these different guys," and they were like, "No, no, there's only one author of the Bible." And I'm like, "This feels like a weird semantics game," but they're like, "God's the author. The guy, the men are the transcribers." Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, it says that. Well, the Bible sure. says that men are carried along by the Holy Spirit yeah. to be that. So yeah. it was an interesting Second Timothy sixteen yes, that all Scripture is breathed out by God. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. God breathed. So it's still but, the same idea that the men are the vessel, but it is written by so God. So brings yeah, life. Yeah, but I would say that the person's person, and we see this very clearly in the Gospels, the person's personality is displayed through their writing. Absolutely. That was and, one of the things that I thought was interesting. Yeah. Was if it was. Not that they would have identical, but if, if if God was, if the Holy Spirit was like, unless the Holy Spirit told them, I need you to write this differently. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it like, is very much a, still the, a free the spirit will thing. subject to the prophet. So God, yeah, that's it's I not like to. they were scribes transcribing. Wait, this right. prophet Ex- subject to the spirit, you mean, right? This, you said the spirit subject to the prophet. That, well, that's the verse. The spirit subject to the prophet. So the prophet can tell the spirit no, essentially. Yeah, you can, or, you can oh, choose oh, to yeah, prophesize. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, the will. way that, okay. the, that the interpretation comes is going to be relevant to like, cause, because God speaks to all of us differently. Mm-hmm. So if we all experience, if it's the same thing, whether it be a natural or a supernatural event, we all experience it. The way that we describe it is going to be different. Yeah. So even though it's an imperfect vessel, you think you, it still creates inerrancy. And I'm, I'm not, I'm no, not No, 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 yeah, yeah. So, cause it's still inerrancy. Yeah. Uh, cause Moses... 
obviously God spoke to him and he wrote the Torah, right? Yeah. He, wrote, mm-hmm. he wrote history. He wrote he stuff wrote he never saw. That he wasn't right. Yeah, that he, right. Wasn't he wrote stuff he never saw. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. That it's a it's obviously a process <sighs> that it's they're what? Please. I just thought of a mo- book of Eli. Oh. Oh, we, is I, that a Christian movie? It's not. If Constantine's not, there's no way Book of Eli. It, is. it has the Bible in it. No, no, the, it the book was is the Bible. It was until the Bible was just set on a shelf with all the other religious books. Was, up until uh, that moment, that's a good point. Sad. Yeah. Up until that moment, like mm. I, I saw a Christian movie re- recently that I really enjoyed, probably more Ben Hur. Uh, yeah. Ben Hur. No, he's not wrong. Ben Hur's up there. He's that's up there. in the top five. Yeah. Um, the really? origi- I was the, joking. No, no. The, the Charlton Heston the one. The Charlton Heston one Absolutely. is a good movie. Top five. Yeah. I don't it's know if I've seen it. Uh, the Forge. Dude. The Forge is well, that's probably for me. What a, what a shameless plug. More, <laughs> probably for me more contextual because it is a men's ministry movie. And it's about. I think I've heard of it. It's, it's new. It's in theaters, like currently in theaters. Oh, yeah? uh, oh, we okay. saw it on my birthday. Is it out already? It was probably it? a theater. I think the word, mm-hmm. the S on the theaters was mm-hmm. too okay. generous. Okay, last screw, Ronnie. And, uh, the, <laughs> I'd sorry. be happy because it was in one theater. Dude, wouldn't that be great? So that was no, in one it was, theater? That'd be it awesome. Was, uh, it, was in, it was a national release, and it was, it, was, um, it was a cinematic depiction of, about what I believe true men's ministry really should look like. Mm. Like the, you know, one to a few. Like you really take a young man under your wing and you teach him. Mm-hmm. Like, so this kid gets saved in a weird, like I forget a, that the, the camera's not just on him. Yeah, I worst. forgot that I yeah. the, worst. <laughs> the, uh, the kid gets saved actually in the guy's place of business is where he really finds his faith yeah. is in the guy's place of business. And then that guy mentors him and disciples him through the process and then introduces him to another, to a group of men who he has discipled for, many years and then they all have mm. a they are they have all risen to the level of a paul and all have timothy's mm. and it's this group and they call that group the forge it's okay. really good all right uh, the, what's i forget there are all these other bible movies what's in the, past. the newer one that Jesus came out Revolution. recently Jesus, where yeah. they the no, forge. I, I haven't seen that but i, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen that it's like a time travel christian movie no, josh you saw that didn't you time travel christian movie. yes Oh yeah, the he said it wasn't shift. good. Though. It seems like he the loved shift. it. The shift. Yeah, he said yeah. it wasn't. You good. liked it that much? It's Angel. It's Angel Studios. It, it was, was that Angel good. Studios there was production. only one oh, was scene. It really? Yeah. There's only know. one. It was basically Job. It was like a modern day take on Job yeah. with some but time. confusing. You said. Yeah, dimension jumping. Dimensions. The gentleman. You can't follow the, the, the gentleman who played you. Okay? who played Satan was. He's a prominent Christian actor. Yeah, big time. Awesome. The blonde hair, blue eyed guy. Yeah. Yeah. And Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. That's it. I just pictured that. Yeah, no, I'm um, nailing it. Yeah. And there was only one scene that I really liked, which was more just a movie geek part where he's walking through a doorway and he like, it's like a different, uh, it was really cool. It was just a, like passing through a doorway and it was a different scene or dimension. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah. No, right. there's, there's, no, and... there's no greater condemnation of a movie than saying, here's my description of the movie. One scene was good. This one scene, but this one, not because of the movie, just... No. Just this well, is two, the two scenes. In the, movie the other scene was, was the prayer scene. Were good. When the guy starts praying and Satan's laughing and then gets yeah. angry and then disappears. Well, that's cool. Uh, I might watch it. Does yeah, Facing the Giants get any love for kind of being the grandfather yeah. of these? Facing the Giants was a terrible it, movie, I and, I, and I loved every bit of it. Movie. Yeah, it's fantastic. Does the Left Behind get any love? Is that no. The, no. Left Behind Just gets no love. Is Facing the Giants the football one? Yeah. Yeah, there's some great scenes. Dude, terrible acting, poorly written, and I loved every minute of it. It's insane. I'm trying to think of any. I mean, obviously, there's God's Not Dead, there's Jesus Revolution, there's all these other movies, but I've never thought those are good movies. I thought Passion was good. Did you watch Jesus Revolution? I didn't I see did. it. I saw it. You see it? No. Oh. But I think it's funny that you said it's not a good no, movie. No, I just meant those overall yeah. movies. There's a uh, lot that I haven't seen out of that I don't want to. <laughs> the Jesus Revolution, I, I feel like, is good. And I again, I haven't seen it, well it but I made. feel like... It was it was well done. Yeah. Uh, it's the same. And I think it told the story pretty well. Yeah. And they it's didn't Jonathan shy Rumi, away right? from the Jonathan yeah. Rumi. Maybe it's because uh, I like the story, too. It's such a good story. Gosh, what's such his a wholesome. actual name? Kelsey yeah. Grammer. Yeah. Uh, Fraser Kelsey Crane. Grammer's in it? That's Fraser Crane in my head. Yeah, he plays Greg Laurie. Yeah. The Beast plays Greg the Laurie. Beast plays Which, Greg by Laurie. the way, hey, yeah. please put in the comments all the movies we should see. If yeah. you're like, hey, there's a ton of Christian movies we you guys are leaving out there. Uh, I would. There'd be some I'd be interested in watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll do an episode where we react to it. Like, oh, my gosh. We need to do some that'd be Christian movies. the mo- boring episode. No, you edited super in. well. Oh, okay. uh, what it's edited, what, Ashley, we're gonna watches, we're gonna ruin those movies. No one's gonna be Ash, gonna feel bad. No. we're gonna destroy. <laughs> Josh is gonna Ashley be watches reaction videos a lot. My wife. Um, oh, okay. Well, uh, they didn't know. Uh, 
And it's so weird to me because she she's probably watched uh, Princess Bride reaction videos more times than she's watched Princess Bride. Princess Bride is one of my top three. It's one of the best. All time. It's, it is one of the it's best. It's a benchmark movies. of comedy. It's kind of MST, right? You remember Mystery Science Theater? Yeah. It's kind of same. If you find somebody you think yeah. is really funny yeah. and they're reacting to but it, But she I watches see. a lot of different people react to Princess Bride specifically, and I didn't get it. How until much the, of it? How un- much of the movie? So they edit it super well. So basically, okay. it's just clipped to the scenes that okay. they find interesting that yeah, make yeah. a comment. So it's like a, I don't know, 12-minute video for yeah. the whole movie. And I didn't get it long. until we were. she was getting ready. She was putting on her makeup, and it was on. And I got caught watching it because I'm like, why would you watch this? And I'm staring at it. The scenes that are, like, emotional and watching the people react. Made dude, emotional. Because they start crying, and they're yeah. like, oh, my God, I did not see that coming. Yeah. And you're like, it's such a real. Th-. And yeah. I was like, I kind of like reaction videos yeah. now. I didn't think I did. I like I like the reaction videos to, like, Gen Z watching Lose Yourself. It was a great video. Mm. I was like. That's got to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, they have yeah, uh, Not Lose Yourself watching the 8, uh, eight Mile, mile. The eight rap mile. at the end of yeah, 8 yeah. Mile. Oh, it's. Where they're all like, oh. Dude, oh, it's, it's one. That movie's so old to them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Not even old. That's like that was a different life. They weren't yeah. born. They weren't alive. Like that's crazy. Yeah. I, I watched a, a Kill Tony episode, which is a stand-up comedy podcast, uh, and this young girl was on there, and Roseanne Barr gets on there, and they're like the the queen of comedy, and the, and this poor girl had no idea who Love Roseanne. Bar- and I'm like, no, that's Love right. It. How would you know? It's probably healthy. For How Roseanne. would you know who this person? Well, Roseanne okay. was out of her. So mind. we spun mm-hmm. this way. We have not named five Christian movies. Which we're is we're not going to either. I don't think we're, we are either. No, who I was just to say, but I will say before to change gears back into what we're talking oh, about. Yeah. Ryan brought this gem. Uh, never heard of this. Not sponsored. Uh, strawberry and cream, Dr Pepper. Whoever thought about blending the cherry flavor of Dr Pepper? I thought it was prunes. What do you think's winning? These are both your items. I want to put that up I, against oh, it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do that after both outside. These are your items. Uh, we should do it in here. This should be on that's, camera. Uh, try that's strawberry, by strawberry the Strawberry and cream, it says. It's strawberry and cream. But as I said, mixing it with the cherry flavor of Dr. Pepper. Why would you blend Gosh, these? It, it's, does Dr. Pepper have a natural cherry flavor? I don't know. Because there's cherry Dr. Pepper. Sweet is all good. It's like sweet and smooth, but it's, it's weird. It's just, um, it's... I can see. Yeah, it's very it. sweet. There's yeah. no Dr. Pepper left in this. It's just strawberries and cream yeah. and sugar. Yeah, it was too it was too sweet. It's the zero sugar, so at least it's uh fake sugar. It's so fake, you won't get fat, sweet. but you'll get cancer. Right. So uh so what Christ, what biblical stories do you want to see made into a movie? Nicely done. I couldn't remember how we got here. I couldn't remember how I got here. Uh I because I have Good like job. I have a few that I'm just like I have uh, always wanted to well, see wait, done. Are you regarding Joseph specifically or no, just I any said, I said biblical. What biblical stories? Yeah, if you could have anything in the Bible made into a movie. I actually would do it. I would want to see a Nephilim movie. I know it would be all would liberty. Be cool. Yeah. It'd still be cool. It'd still be fascinating. All Bible. liberty. All liberty. It's 100% The only liberty. Bible part of it is. It's what, terrible. Which would be the gross part. Yeah, no one Angels having that. sex with humans. That would be weird. Yeah. That you, be just, you just became weird. Yeah. But, just became? Yeah. But, but what I'm interested in is the children that become giants that's the story i want the to men see. of renown because yeah, if Nephilim if we right. had a men of renown where like for i don't know five ten generations because they talk about we'll how goliath like there's a theory that goliath is there was any one of the fear in you to mention the stories you want made because you've thought about them becoming movies yourself and you're about to say on a podcast no because i think everybody has wanted they to have, see these they have movies. not one of them they haven't i haven't heard people talk about it what one of them, I'm like, that's an interesting. How come it hasn't been made? He's not gonna if it's say so it. interesting, the fact that most how come it hasn't of, been made? Well, I, well, the, our viewership is so large too. I you're just, really just in most, danger of most. Your idea I'm limiting think. my ideas to things I don't want to write. So there's the Nephilim. That's I got. most biblical movies. I'm like, I don't think people care to make them, which is crazy to me because I desperate. My problem is the stuff I want to see made. To be done well takes a serious budget. Mm-hmm. This isn't going to be because mm-hmm. I don't want it made like, yeah. a, 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 like one of the lame. It's like, oh, no. And there's no, no special effects. That's the and problem it's just, with all. And it's all just, this, the same players who are Christian who were famous at one point, yeah. but now they're actors yeah. who do only Christian movies. I want a Game of Thrones budget to <sighs> make uh, David's Mighty Men. Yep. Oh, I told you I shouldn't, do it. shouldn't have done it. D- dude, it like, oh, but there's, dude, you don't have the money. I, like, to, well, not for me. those dudes. <laughs> yeah. For those dudes, I mean, Joe Shabashabeth, Eleazar, like, to watch okay? what that scene would look. <laughs> Joe Shabashabeth. <laughs> That's his name. 
to watch that scene where it's one dude versus 800, one dude right. versus 300. And Anaya, where his hand free, it freezes to the sword. Like, yeah. I, that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, yeah. I really, and it's by the power of God, so yeah. it's a little supernatural. Right. Well, and even like, the, kinda fun. the three that swim through the... Yeah, that yeah. go through in the cave and to, get to the bring water. back a drink yeah. of water. And then that he, he pours out. That's great. That's that's great story. On, That'd be great. This we need to see The this. one I have won't be as great, but it's kind of a Ben-Hur concept. It's a Zacchaeus story. But you don't know it's about Zacchaeus. It's just about this little guy who has trouble in life. Yeah. And then he encounters Jesus. That's like the Ben Hur comes in the side door and you introduce Jesus. That'd be kind of fun. I mean, look, like I always the, like the side character. Like the little guy in the back. I mean, not a midget. <laughs> but a, <laughs> that is as bad as the N word. The greatest movie ever. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you know, I know. Yeah, you know, I know. Uh, yeah. Do you have any? Well, you said Mighty Man, but I was thinking like something like Samson. Something like that. Oh, Good Samson, Samson movie. That'd be fun. Be cool. There's been a few. I just want to see a guy just. Take on a whole army with There's a jawbone of a donkey. The old Bible yeah. movies, they made a Samson movie. There, there was, in fact, there was an old, there was a live action Samson, and there was an animated one from years the ago. The problem that was is, fun too. I picture Samson right now, and I keep picturing the Rick and Morty episode of oh, Pickle shoot. Rick yeah. and the the assassin. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's funny. Cool. I, I was going to go long with, hair. I was going to get young, a young Jason Momoa mm. as Samson. Mm. I wonder if they would get any traction if you did a graphic, like an animated graphic novel version, where it was very graphic, yeah. but still biblically accurate. If it would gain any steam, I think there are because you can do an animation for m so much cheaper yeah. than effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so if you were to make an animated, like biblically accurate David's Mighty Men, I don't know if anybody would care. But if you, you can, I mean, think dark. about that though. You could write like a comic book series for kids yeah. to teach them about the Old Testament. But I'm talking about like no, he's I'm adult, talking about graphic adult, graphic novel, graphic novel. Dan Loman yeah. wrote. I'm well, you curious. start with the kids when you get some sure. money, and you. That's true. Yeah, that's Dan Loman did a graphic novel series. Wrote it. Obviously, yeah. didn't have it uh, illustrated. Mm -hmm. On Judges, he had a whole oh, Judges series. Great. Great. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it just never. The, but we don't give. Uh, we don't give enough credit to how crazy the Bible is. How insane! It, there's a lot going on because I, I, we, we do that. It's the whole prescriptive versus descriptive. descriptive. Like mm -hmm. we, Nostradamus. It's it with, it's so crazy sometimes. Like there's a, like if we take it as literal as we do, there was a, a like a story of somebody who's like I don't know whose baby this is, and then. He goes, well, let's cut it in cut half. It in half. And he was serious. He wasn't like, he's like, we're cutting that baby in half. That's insane. Because yeah. one of the one of the women was like, yep. Mm. Do, do you know how insane of a culture you have to live in yeah. to where this dude suggests it? You go along with it. Yeah. And the real mom goes, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Take the baby. It'd be, it'd That's be, crazy. It'd be a fun, like, to set it up so people can actually feel the tension. Is like a few different times they asked him stuff, and he had things cut in half before goats. You know what I mean? Like so that way you actually feel like it's gonna happen. Interesting, right? So you could feel like, oh, I oh, like that. Oh, this is gonna happen. They're like, we don't know whose bushel this is. He's like, cut the bush in half. Yep. It's actually, it. I do it's think not the life of Solomon deal. would be cool. Seriously. Solomon would be yeah. especially because in it's regards ups to and that. downs, right? And, like, and he's like woo. wise and wealthy and just you can cool. wise and, and makes terrible decisions. Horrible like, decisions. Dang, how does he not see the? Watch. How does he not see the harems and all that as a problem? Right, it, right. That's a good one, dude. Oh man, I am excited about the X, uh, just to see Paul depicted and and just. I'm just curious if they're going to include all of it. You know, the shipwrecks and the the beatings. And oh everything. yeah, and just how like much? Because it's a limited. It's not like it's endless. I wonder well, how much of seven acts they're going to go through. Seasons of Chosen. Seven seasons they'll of easily chosen. get seven seasons of acts. But he, he even, Which is intentional. Maybe they'll change it, but he announced oh, of most of the... In fact, I, I didn't. none of these had like really long runs. Uh, the, book of, the Book of Moses was like just a three-part... Like, like three a, episodes. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Mini movies. And, yeah. So, and I think that I want to say they said acts was going to be like... Th Three seasons. Yeah, yeah, which is not a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you can do a season, you can do probably 30 seasons of Acts. Like, well, you can yeah, actually do, nice. you can, you can end your yeah. first season with I mean, the introduction of Saul. Like, you can absolutely get episodes all the way to Saul. Like, that's true. No, but see, that'd be the prequel season. The next season would be the prequel, right? You release it about before he's Paul. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, you could lead all the way up to Saul, and that's where you end, and then Paul comes in the next, the next season. Then, then oh, I was doing a Star Wars thing. The oh. next two oh, seasons actually it. would be Paul then. Like yeah. If they do it in three, you could do up to in three. thirds. Yeah. yeah, it's just they're they're obviously going to leave a lot out. Just uh, riding away in prison at the end of Rome. What a great <laughs> ending to your a series! Fun ending. <laughs> all right, that is great. Uh, all right, well, I, I do think it's interesting. What would be the intention of 
of creating or writing something that if you're not pointing them to Christ or the gospel. Well, that's what I think he is. Mm -hmm. I think he's pointing them to Christ well, the whole time. Well, why, Whether why you, you like why'd him you ask or not? that question? Do you it's, assume he's not? No, I'm just saying because we're talking about like what would like, what show would you make or what movie would you want? And I go, you I don't think, think it's the Nephilim point I th towards I think Jesus? it's the same. I think it's the same principle that they heretic. have is that it's not it's it's to get people to read the Bible. Sure. Well, that's that's exactly right. It draws them in. If they enter the Bible at any point, that obviously and then we read. release our own Bible. Mm. Marketing. That's right. hmm. <laughs> uh, is it a paraphrase? Is it a verse by verse, word right. by word, thought by thought? Oh, it's just heresy. It's just, it's just heresy. <laughs> There's it's no real just It's just straight heresy. heresy. That's the synopsis of it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually excited to one day watch The Chosen. I will watch it. It will happen at some point. Every episode wrecks you. I just texted. I bet. Oh, I bet. You were talking about today. I just texted Lisa. We, we need to watch The Chosen. Mm -hmm. we, we watched episode one and didn't. You know that's not enough. You gotta, I mean, we didn't really give it a chance. Too many people in my life reference it, and then I'm I'm literally have like ongoing phone calls with with people to talk about the Bible, who have who asked me to call them and talk to them about it because of the chosen. Mm -hmm. Oh, so if I haven't seen what they're referencing, and they do it all the time, and they're like, you know, that one scene was Zacchaeus, and I'm like, I happen to have seen that one scene. Yeah. I mean, you've so, read it. That's what I always say. I said the book's better than the movie. Would you but say that if they're a new Christian, if someone's a new Christian, would you say that uh, watching The Chosen versus just diving into the Word would be misleading? Oh. So I don't know because I haven't yeah, seen it. That, that's my problem. It. I haven't you, seen you've it. You've seen it. Oh. So I, what, I've seen the first say? season. I would say, what would you the, say? I'd say, you know, read the. Most of the time, read the books are better than the. Visual version. I would I would say that it would not be misleading at all. I've watched the entire thing. Okay. And I have watched a couple of the seasons. I've watched multiple times. And I know they to, fill in up, certain right? conversations and characters sure. and yeah. situations. Um, I I would say it's not mis. It would not be misleading at all. But there are details and intricacies that you will miss if you don't get into the word, like the relationship. I do. Aspect. I do. I do or recall the, watching the Nicodemus scene when he's he's meeting with Jesus. On and the rooftop, that's yeah, a and great that is sequence that never. I, I've seen that like multiple times. Is well, is the uh, chosen well, scene? All, it's all oh, over. No, that scene is it's constantly it's played on. Yeah, but different I'm shorts. just I remember like I'm reading serious. through it, and I'm like I never felt any emotion. So seeing it depicted yeah. seeing, yes. does. Um, There's another Nicodemus evoke. scene later on mm -hmm. in one of the I think in the last season that air. So I think in season five that just absolutely wrecked me. Mm. Yeah. I did like in the Nicodemus one where it was they were hiding on the stairs to write it down, because you yeah. do wonder who wrote how do they this. Chronicle how do they chronicle these And it's yeah. like they were hiding. They're like, shit. They're yeah. like, I thought that was a. I really watched. Witty. I watched this uh, recently. Yesterday, the scene of him um, giving a sermon and the five loves two fish and the five thousand people, and I think um, Andrew was echoing his sermon. To the people like sitting in the back. Yeah, there were so there were several like, of them that oh, were. Oh, that's interesting. a practical Every way so that could many, have been done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff like that is interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think you have to put that in if you're trying to depict it. Mm -hmm. It's weird because you are taking liberties. You right. have to take liberties in order to do right. it. Right. And so somebody's going to hate. I wonder if say the chosen is more akin to a sermon than it is to the yes. Bible. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's That's good. Yeah, because we're... It is we're very long much like a sermon. Yeah. Yeah. Short for us. But. Right. <laughs> so that's actually... That's an interesting take on it. We absolutely take liberties. And I don't know a pastor who... I was listening to one of the most conservative, fundamentalist pastors, uh, and he even did the... You know, sometimes I like to think that this... Ha and I'm like, oh my gosh, you... And I just heard him recently get mad because he's like, I don't know why pastors fill in the blanks. The Bible doesn't need you to fill in. Same guy in a sermon goes, I like to think of this. I'm like, you, that's literally what you're doing. You're filling in a blank that you say, I, like you said, I don't read it with emotion. Mm -hmm. They're actually putting that emotion in there. That's yeah. not necessarily true. They may have been cold. They may have had a different emotion. That Jesus may have been like the, funny about it. Not you every story is that way. They're obviously well, like when you're reading through the crucifixion and everything. It's but, like, but, oh, even, get but even then, uh, like when we give historical context, right? Mm -hmm. That's still a liberty. I learned that from someone else who wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm I, more I, intrigued by the air quotes on that. <laughs> it was only one, though. It's half of that. Only about context. It's well, right hand. So it was historical no, context. No, no, no. Bunny. no Just turn to bunny. Both of those are on the right side of the historical context, quote, quote. 
But why is it? I don't even get. Sense. Why is it historical? Because I'm a big quote. Chris Farley fan. <laughs> so maybe I eat my own. Yeah, I just scabs. I just don't know what it was for. Because <laughs> I had a cigar in this hand. That's why I'm young. Like, is that's the I, I when I see air quotes, I go to the Friends reference. Mm. Ooh, like, that's oh, I'm sad. sorry. See, it doesn't mean you're sorry. Uh, you don't do oh, quotes. that's funny. Uh, so even then, we're taking we're we're all trying our best to explain, helping people totally. be in the moment. Yeah, sure. But I think sometimes we're like, well, I'm not filling the blanks. I'm giving you historical context. I'm like. From someone who was there? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, no, no. From someone who did yeah. some research that could be wrong? Well, even when you There's use some of that. Even when you use Josephus, you're like, right. you're still Josephus filling in place. Josephus is still second in yeah. information. He 100%. wasn't there. Yeah. So, Unless uh, you're talking about uh, Atlantis, and then he was there. So, mm. The Eye of the Sahara. Um, no, Nailed it. No Atlantean. Uh, okay. What do we... Uh, Next one. What do we got? The first yeah. one. How do you guys feel about regarding the Dove Awards? Uh, oh, and it's an all-entertainment day. Well, yeah, but we don't. You can't think that anybody cares about this. That. Is good. Let, let them I think there's okay. a I'll lot of people that care about it. You do really? I don't care about it, but I think there's a lot of people that do. Go ahead, Josh. I set it all up. Dove Awards just happened last week. Oh. You care about the Dove Awards, and clearly we now we know uh, what makes a great Christian song and what makes a great worship song. So okay, start There's with the first. The line with, between the secular and the sacred that's right. is one that we. So let's start mm, with this Dove Awards. Why nuanced. don't you care about the Dove? Why? Why? Do, I'm gonna say we. I'll, I'll add myself in there. Why don't we care about the Dove Awards? This is an awards for Christian art, Christian music. Why is that something that does not? Uh, does it, anybody here saying they it's, do before? My, I, mine's twofold, but yeah, I honestly didn't really know about them. Whatever I think of Dove, though. You notice that the logo the for Dove chocolate and Dove soap is the same? Because they're the same it's product. The same. Try it. Have you it. ever eaten Dove soap? Have you ever, have you ever washed yourself with chocolate? chocolate? It's exactly like <laughs> I have. I've chocolate. eaten soap. <laughs> I've sat. I have and sat the there way, with soap in my if mouth. If you eat enough soap, you win an award. Was that a punishment you got? Yeah. Did you get the soap in the mouth punishment? You did not. Yes. You lie. And there were certain soaps that were better than others. You lie. Oh, this has happened multiple times to you. You are yes. lying. Because you didn't learn. I your don't lesson? believe you. That's like a fifties thing. Nobody does that. I didn't think it was real. You sat with soap in your mouth? I yes. think it's child First abuse, all, just so you know. What did the, you say? The orange bar that's kind of translucent, what is that? Uh, dial. Is it dial or yeah. neutrogena oh my or something? Gosh, and you then are the right dove though. is the, the, the white, white one. Yeah. yeah, dove tasted the better. Dove is the one that you carve the stuff out of in, <laughs> in like elementary school. Yeah. That's a, that was a great way. So I, Josh, yeah. Yeah. Had, I Josh, that. Had, Josh had jaw surgery when he was younger. It was from holding soap in his mouth. 100%. <laughs> it's like, that's I, a, I've, that, that is, I genuinely think it's kind of child abuse like. Not that, that your parents are bad. My parents not. are wonderful and totally abused me. I still do. Uh, but uh, <laughs> can you tell us what you said? I don't remember. Yeah, how do you, you remember? You don't that? remember? Like someone made this, you put so many as a response to something this, you but said. But it sounds like an isolated times. incident. Yeah, this has happened it to happened a multiple. It's happened so much that you but can't you know remember me. any of the I mean, So I, much I, so that he knows the flavor of different soaps and picked a favorite. No, I was probably preteens. You know, preteens and younger. Like just being mouthing off. Preteens like 12? Yeah, just mouthing off. Oh my gosh, I couldn't. Shepherd is thirteen. I could not imagine being like, Shit, "Here's my soap in well, your mouth." It was a new bar. No, no, that's the best part. Fresh bar. He's Hold bigger on. than you now. I know. So I know. Josh is tiny. I would love for him to look at a used bar. <laughs> Why is there hair <laughs> on, <laughs> on it? <laughs> I promise. Oh, that's that. Would I be won't talk stuff. anymore. That would be yeah. Yeah. I don't say bad things. Yeah. He, Shepherd was Shepherd was freaked out because he just heard about a vow of silence and how monks don't speak. Because there was a, we saw a monk. And I was How like, do we know that? What? How do we know monks don't speak? Well, have you ever I've, talked to a monk? Yeah. Not not all monks, obviously, exactly. but there are this traditions. Is, this feels like a tree falling in the uh, woods. Right? Type it, of does, thing it does. Question. It is. But it was just funny because he was just like, I, I don't even understand how or why. why. He, and he even said, which I thought was genius, because he goes, how does that honor God? And I was like, oh. I had never put that mm. together. Like, well, why, why would it honor like, God to not like, talk? That felt like an easy answer. Believe me, if you never said a word <laughs> as your dad, you, it would honor <laughs> it would honor your father <laughs> if you stopped yes. talking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so double so anyway, awards. Double awards. Uh, Why don't we care about them? I don't. I don't watch any award shows. Like I don't okay. watch the Grammys. So that's kind I of mixed watch, in there. I don't watch 
like sports award show. I don't watch any of yeah, it. Yeah, I can't stand that self aggrandizing. Yeah, cool. it's self congratulating stuff. Can't I agree with that. It. So that is actually a good instinct. So yeah. maybe we're not picking on the Dove Awards. Maybe we're all just like, I don't if like I'm, any of that stuff. That's true. I do. He's right. I don't like any Dove Awards are in a different category. I think it's a matter of relationship. If I knew someone who was involved or receiving an award, sure. Then I'd be like, oh my gosh, sure. I'm taping that. Sure. I'm gonna. But, but that's for the person, not you're for the taping event. it on your VHS tape. Is what you're gonna do? <laughs> well, you know, hold gonna, on. You're gonna He's get out your VHS record. Hang on a second, guys. Wait a second. You're gonna start, you're gonna, that's, we, just, we just take this over. Yeah, that, when you watch push, the Dove Awards, you push put this open. <laughs> it's tradition. <laughs> yep. Oh, Wait, I didn't clean it. I had I had a a take that out. Rewind it. Put like the it. cleaner in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you're like, what was the, remember the tab that either of you had to mm-hmm. bring? Yeah. Yep. If the yeah. tab was on, it would record. Once yes. you broke it, it wouldn't no, record, it. right? Yep. That's, That's what it, it was? Yep. Yeah. Wow, but we just lost anybody under 50. On we this used podcast. to put tape VHS. over that of course. little slap because that, then you could do it. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. guys, there are things called VHS tapes that That's Josh how, apparently still That's uses. how we record over people's wedding videos. Uh-huh. Throw that right on there. Sorry. Okay, so yeah, so one is we don't care about any of those. Although I will say, if there's a really funny person doing hosting the oscars Rick, ricky gervais although i didn't Best watch one. the oscars i just watched his material afterwards yes and he is roasting everyone what he did is how i feel is that i'm just like you guys are insane he basically you, you're all here for he yourselves basically did everything you wanted never need to see another one again yeah uh, uh dove award specifically so recently we heard uh recently my concepts that i've heard in the past were legitimized by people who are in the christian music industry and they kind of bashed the Christian music industry. They, they said it was gross. Yeah, they just said it was gross, which is what I've always known from other friends of mine who were in the industry. So I don't like the industry already. I don't think the quality... I think the quality of music is... Uh, it's just so sterilized and so... F- like, I, I, it doesn't feel genuine. Okay. There are some Christian songs that are phenomenal. Hmm. Most of them fall into the worship category for me because I love worship music. Christian music, I don't enjoy very much. So, okay, Floyd, any thoughts about Dove Awards? What makes a good Christian song? What makes a good worship song? I don't know. I think that what makes a good Christian song or worship song is very individualized. I think it. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's for you. You're an individual. The person. Yeah. yeah. So I think that I think that like for it has to be something that that I don't know speaks to me for lack of a better terminology. Yeah. There has to be yeah, some yeah, sort yeah. of a connection, an emotional sure. connection or a spiritual yeah. connection. Yeah, it's good. And I you, don't know how to quantify that. Uh. Awesome God, our God is an awesome God. He copyright no. issues we just got. Uh, is one of my favorite because it's just that hit me at a time when I was young when it came out. It oh was so God. and it was so like emotional for me. I can't still love it. What's the, it. what's the what's the added the what's the added verses? Ever. Who added the verses? It. Something about putting, putting on, on the Ritz. Ritz. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, you've never heard the verse? No, is it? Okay. Is it put You'd on the hate wrist? it too. Yeah. Is it really? Well, this guy, this guy, this guy who died. What does that even mean? There's a lot of guys that have died too. Uh, what? Like the the song, putting on the Ritz. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, we're getting ritzy. We're uh, going out to the Ritz. And the Ragamuffin Band. I know his name Ritz and the Ragamuffin Band. Huh. Yeah. So and so and the Ragamuffin Band. That's another thing I don't know. Like, I don't know people's names. Josh, you go You go last because this is your obviously your field. Um, Don't know why I don't care about the Dove Awards. It just. It doesn't. It seems like the same stuff. Like just what we heard. It was the same yeah. idea as that mm-hmm. yeah. self-congratulating kind of BS. Um, and what makes I think where I and obviously it's completely not something I can I can validate or prove. It's all feeling. If it feels sincere, I like either one. Sometimes they don't feel. It feels like you're rhyming. Pray with say and stay. It just feels like super like Ooh. like you wrote a song that you're trying to make He's me on something. L- <laughs> oh, get a, get a melody to that. Uh, we just said Josh's next song. Right I just want to pray and say and this say. This is so much better <gasps> than the other ones. <gasps> uh, I think it. I think just the authenticity, and that's just weird. That's so subjective, but I just feel like when I feel like, oh, no, this feels, feels, I think that's when I liked when worship songs started recording live in churches, hmm. when the, it was yeah. always the live recordings. Yeah. I already gravitated way more towards that than anything in a studio. And again, was it because it's sincere in a studio? Or w- I just feel like it felt sincere. It felt sincere. Uh, yeah. It just felt yeah, yeah authentic. But again, that doesn't mean anything. But it, I felt it that way. So yeah, it's funny because uh, we hung out with a, a a new friend of ours who's in the indi- or was in the industry, and he he talked about like he joked about a songwriting like conference that he went to and he's just talked about how horrible it, well, yeah, it was camp it was talked about how horrible it was they divided him up with other famous christian singers. and i've been thinking about it and i'm like 
while I get what he's saying and, and agree with him for the most part, I, I then go, is it bad to be like, I have this passion, I want to sing about Jesus, I, I want to learn how to do it. I want to learn how to get my emotions. Collabs are huge in the secular so world. It's kind they of don't weird. think anything of it. I'm like, there is this, and I can see from his angle, it's terrible. And then I go, is it that bad? And would I ever go to like a, a sermon writing conference and like how to write a? I mean, Maybe I should a public speaking. I probably one? should or <laughs> um, comedy one. Do you, do you, if you could, yeah. if you could get into a, a sermon writing conference with who's the guy you like who sits down when he's speaking? John Corson. Like, say you, you got paired up with John Corson, would you go? No. No. I'd, I'd be like, can we just go to lunch? I don't, what I, the guys I want to spend time with, like pastors that I don't know who are kind of like, yeah, not like, celebrity, but they're like. Somebody you're drawn to. Yeah, that I've, that I've listened to over the years. I just want to have lunch with and I want to talk about their life. I don't want, I don't want advice on church or sermon writing or anything because I'm like, I'm more drawn to them because of the person that they are. Mm. Yeah. And so I want to learn like. We, How did you right. become a man that I admire? Where, where like, well, because we where feel like that's you? a big part of what makes a man successful is who they are as an individual. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, whether you're successful in ministry or whatever, it comes from that. Sorry. Where do you know? But where do you then find places to sharpen your skill other than self study and looking online? If we, so, if our yeah, only space right. is that we're saying like I'll just do self study, that means we're not willing to. Or and spirit I, By the way, I'm with you. I'm agreeing with you that I wouldn't yeah. want to do it, but then I'm like. Well then, where am I? Where am I wow. open to actually growing? Other than like, no, I need to find it myself. For mm -hmm. us, it's it's here, because we on the podcast. We, on the podcast, <laughs> because Monday morning so we come in, this. or every Tuesday we come into staff meeting, and we debrief service. If if something especially good or bad happened on a Sunday, we're talking about it on Monday, including the sermon. If you feel like you fell down, there you have counselors around you, losing using that term loosely, because we would talk to each other about it. It's yeah. interesting though, because I, I I agree. I like where you're going though, because I have this weird thought of if if my golf swing falls apart, yeah, I can talk to everybody I know that are good, bad, whatever, get this, advice. Is this how you work in the but go, Yeah. I shot a thirty eight the other day on the front nine. Uh but going front four. going and getting is front doesn't like uh self celebrating getting a coach is so different like going and getting an actual golf coach yeah. who's like let me work with your swing and let me give you advice and help you out versus i'm just talking to my friends about it right. and picking up ideas then i got to go try things like i don't know so that's but, an interesting thought but golf I'm, you're trying to replicate something that is rec that is that you can replicate in preaching the sir, the, the style, the delivery style is as unique as the individual that is delivering. So for you to try to mimic John Corson wouldn't work because that wouldn't be genuine. And the thing that I think that most people are looking for from the pew is, is a genuine person standing. But in front there of them. are skills yeah. there that are, are universal skills. in preaching. Sure. Absolutely. And I know we've been in doing this for a while. public speaking, like you were just saying. Even like if you, yeah. even if you went to a conference and all they did was affirm the values that you held true, that would be helpful. Even if you're like, even if they're like, hey, these are some four That'd elements. That'd be Joe's favorite conference. Well, no, if you you're just doing said, great, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, it would be nice. But if you did, well, oh, clearly you. not my favorite conference because I'm not willing to go to that. Right. Uh, but uh, if there are four elements, again, any level of like learning or being corrected or being affirmed, there is something to someone like a John Corson saying like, hey, sermon should have these four elements, and you're like, oh, okay. And like whatever, I don't know. But you've, I'm just saying you've like, done that. You, and use... you wouldn't, you wouldn't just take it and lay it on top of your sermon. Yeah. You'd still look for nuggets. But you've done that over the years. You use uh, the Andy Stanley sticky point. I you, do, a, yeah, I do yeah, a, a one, like, I do a one point thing. Yeah, you do. I mean, yeah. you, we've done that. But we, I'm saying that the thing is that that's self. I'm just, I guess, I'm going with myself. It's arrogance on one part of me to say like, if I discover it myself, then good. But if I sit down with someone, they tell me bad. Sure. Like, I don't want them to tell yeah, me, I'm but, in, but I'm I sit down, I'm concept. okay with that. Yeah, there's so I'm like, why here. wouldn't I go and submit myself to being like like a writing type thing? Like, why do I think I've got to figure it out? I don't. I clearly don't yeah. have it all figured weird? out. Yeah. Yet, where where would you even go, right? It doesn't exist. For, that's the problem. We're talking about an imaginary place. Yeah, I don't Even when even... we go to conferences, the problem is they're you usually not so. talking about stuff I want to talk about. Hmm. I'd, I'd, I wouldn't mind sitting in a room with somebody with the three of the best preachers of all time and hear them talk about their, their method. Their process. Yes. Who are the best, I'd love to hear three about best preachers of all time? Oh, Nate, let's do so it. They're right here. You three. Um, the, wow. See you guys. 
best preachers of all time. Wow. Uh, he, he's not wrong. Give me a dove. Dude, <laughs> preachers of all time actually happens in different seasons of life. It depends anyway. how you measure it. I, I don't, don't even know. That's John, well, you John, said that. John I mean, Chrysostom. The, the reason why John I asked Chrysostom probably that. is number one. I don't even uh, know that name. Silver Tongue. Oh, it is. A, my favorites were John Ortberg, but that doesn't mean he's the best. Ortberg was really? He was, was one of my favorite? favorites. Yeah. John Chrysostom, the old story about the, the silver tongue they called him. He was the preacher who preached a sermon, and everybody would always applause during and after his sermons. They would break John out Lloyd. Applause. And he would. Pastor at, of, the, of the road. It made him. Every time he spoke, people cheered. It made him so mad that he preached a sermon and was like, dude, and he did this amazing oration of like, do not clap anymore do not applaud and when he got done everybody broke out into applause and he was like i can't win yeah. but he had this weird gift of just like brilliance but i think yeah. uh, i've always him, told the guy john lloyd who had the road and by i've sale, never heard him. every single oh, that's not true i did a conference with him he that's would right. he yeah, would yeah. every time he talked people just cheered and i'd always be like what is happening it's like, amazing yeah. he's, he's not saying i mean he's good but he's not saying yeah. anything amazing but every time he just cheered the whole time yeah i was like that is a gift so john, joe was john, waiting for it when he preached everything. oh i know i get the opposite it's terrible i don't get cheers. crickets i don't i don't i don't get cheers. smatterings at the end yeah. smatterings are great uh, john we, john are corson's are another not? one are we not uh john when you get my email it's going to ask to go have, bring you lunch i'm going to come to i think he's in washington or oregon Somewhere it's I don't want to be. It's one of my dreams. I'm going to go have lunch with that guy. Mm. I just think he's the best. Uh, I didn't tell you this. They know this. At the pastor's conference we were at, I was I brought up because I was like, these people that we met and were hanging out with, uh, they were originally part of Calvary Chapel. And I was like, oh, my gosh, my favorite preacher in the world is from Calvary Chapel. His name's John Corson. And the girl goes, he baptized me. And I was like, oh, That's I don't awesome. know why I thought that was so cool. Yeah, I was like, that was cool. pretty cool. He's so neat. He's, he, he wrote one of my favorite commentaries. Oh, the course in commentaries. It's amazing. so good, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's a hard question. Yeah. I think my, I, I'm simple. I remember I'm just uh, Billy Graham. He's bringing it back. Like when I, He's hard, bringing it back. Hard to like argue against Billy, Billy Graham, Graham though. Man. Francis Chan and oh, Francis Chan's Francis. way up there. Mike way Winger. Up there Mike me. Winger dives into like the nerdy stuff, and I enjoy Winger. that. I don't think um, I've ever heard him preach because he, he. Well, his are like it's like a class. Well, no, so. no, he he because he used to be a pastor. He used, he used to be a, pastor. a pastor. You can watch. No, I watched like a, a bunch of his sermons. Yeah. Uh, I've only watched four minutes of his podcast. Incredibly intelligent. Yes. Well laid out. Not a great preacher. Yeah, uh, no, that's what I'm saying. But I love his teaching. But I'm I'm drawn to that in this season, like the intellectual, yeah. the the diving into the nerdy stuff. You yeah. know. Oh, keep going. So you love the... John Corson. You were, he's okay. as nerdy as it gets. About yeah. an hour and a half long sermons. It's just yeah. long. They're all over an hour every okay. sermon. Wow. Shocking. Yeah. Also, like, go with uh, your music stuff. You didn't get to answer that. I wanted to hear what you said. Like acoustic uh, music. It, what's question. funny is it, it, what it makes reminded me of. We were at the pastor's conference, and Joe turns to me and goes like, hey, I just ran a question. Like, well, how does your brain work? Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny, but I understood what he was asking when we were in worship. Uh -huh. And um, honestly, I, I didn't – I wasn't in the mindset of hmm, like acquiring tools – for, right. for leading worship. Because they were singing songs we don't sing. So I want to know how you respond to these songs you yeah. don't normally sing. Yeah, well, a lot were of them I didn't know, to be honest. And I was, tr it was that. Yeah. I was like, I felt convicted that in the same way, it's hard for me to feel, to, to submit myself to the worship setting hmm. when I'm not leading. And probably because that is what feels the most uh, unfamiliar. It is harder to do both in worship because mm -hmm. when somebody's preaching, I very easily can listen to them. And, and I'm also critiquing and thinking, I would have said that different. Or, man, I'm going to implement that. That's a great. And doing that while someone is talking is super easy. Mm -hmm. But trying to worship yeah. and have those You're same right. mechanical thoughts is probably and virtually so, impossible. And it was really, and that's something that I've been feeling progress in or changes since the last, like, staff uh, conference that we went to or retreat that we went to where I actually really felt like um, that abandon and uh, and so that was something that I was really felt like God was just working on with me it yeah. wasn't as much as, as as a leader it was more of a well in, in that concept I think learning how to follow okay even in that though let me ask like 
even that, in that, if you heard a song, like, so you're worshiping, but you'd still be like, man, this song's amazing. That doesn't, sure. come, that doesn't come up. You're thinking like, I want to lead worship with this song. That doesn't, yeah. does that hit you? That had, yeah, that comes up. Okay. But it was, and so I'll like take a, I took like a note on my phone. Oh, you did? And uh, What's the note say? It was just like the song. Don't stand next to Joe again. Don't do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't stand, don't. He's stand. breaking me out of worship. He's asking um, questions. <laughs> it was, the, yeah, just like noting down the songs and, uh. Or some, some something during the sermon or, or the message. Oh, it wasn't cool. a sermon. The the theologian and philosopher. Uh, uh, yes. yes, football player. Fo- <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah. So I guess what makes a good song in the sense of between a, you said delineation delineation between Christian song versus a worship song. There there is a difference. Yeah, they're literally different categories even like, in the devil. When you well, listen, they would be right. Yeah, and and right. I I would define those as one is meant to entertain the other. Because you is listen meant to skillet bring people in right? to sing together. Skillet is a Christian great band. Oh, sorry. but it's like it can be a hundred percent. You know, can be. and I think it matters where your heart is. Oh, and, oh, and, sure. and yeah, and uh, so I think in that matter of any song, I think that's the most fascinating part is regardless of your intention or the lyricism or how fast it is or whatever that people the song resonates music resonates with people for different reasons and it's yeah. usually between the lines and it's not directly for that reason well you know, what's like, yours what's the one what what makes a good christian song for you um number one uh like that's hard it's a few bullet points like i agree with the theology um mm, it's good i think I have heard some songs where I'm like, no. A so, lot, a lot of songs I'm like, where I just This go, is actually no, a difference. Right? Yeah. Um, this last Sunday, uh, I was talking with the guys out here that it felt different for me in leading this last Sunday, and it was something where it just felt like I was worshiping more honestly. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I'm not there or on autopilot and other, other Sundays. It just felt more like mm-hmm. the, the, not the weight, the how do you, the perspective of that I get to worship this incredible mm, weight seems like the right word there yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, beyond do you, do you feel like there was maybe more pressure because you were alone you didn't have another vocalist oh um no yeah. I, I, I maybe because that maybe. was the first thing Stephanie said yeah. when she realized you were alone she yeah. was kind of Eric oh, was singing no. but uh, but Josh yeah. was singing the high Eric part and Matt and had the, the yeah, yeah Eric? The high part and hey, low he part. nailed the harmonies man. Um, and so that was the funny thing. It was, it was more of that abandon, and it was more that intentionally you were abandoned, um, yeah. more intentionally, uh, honestly, um, singing the words. Yeah. What what ratio do you guys? So for preaching for us, obviously music for you, Floyd, uh, and music for you, Josh. Uh, what percentage do you work on the mechanics and the practical side of speaking or awesome. music? Great question. Versus the theology, like just when you're writing a sermon, and I and I know we're like, no, I'm, it's I want it to be 100 percent theologically no, accurate. Good. But when you work on it, what's the percentage of you working on the delivery? material delivery versus, versus the delivery? Yeah, That's yeah a good, I'm just curious. that is an actually good life through the lens Ooh, of a pastor. Yeah, That's yeah like I'm part intrigued. of the gig. Because it is. Because if, if if we go 100% theology, which people will probably want to say, you are boring, boring as get up and nobody's yeah. listening. So you know and, as a speaker. And some people aren't it. even getting it if you're just fumbling through the transitions because yeah. people are like, I'm getting people. lost. I've heard yeah. somebody yeah. recently who was stuttering through, like couldn't right here, place buddy. their words. And I'm like, is uh, uh, anyone uh, uh, still uh, listening? Oh. And, I re- and I actually had that thought. Is any or Because I was hung up on the like, you don't sound like you know what you're saying. I, I wonder that if... That is a good point, too. The, yeah, the, uh, the authority seems shaky. Dude, in it's that gone, yeah. so Go I don't get it. You, because well, you lose your credibility, yeah. right? I don't know. I th- I, I, I've i never given conscious thought to it. Yeah, I mean, that's funny. I, I, I would have to say that they're both equally important in my view, so it would probably be 50-50. Okay. Because they're equally important. Like, I don't want to say something that's theologically inaccurate, but at the same time, I want to deliver it in such a way that it is palatable and easily understood yeah 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 it's good uh oh me my my turn i'm on a podcast uh um i'd say so all week long so i guess percentage so for seven days i'm literally just working on uh the theology of it but there is structure right so even though i'm not working on the delivery but i am writing it in a way that i will be able to do the delivery so i guess some of that's in there and then on sunday morning at that point, I'm really trying to focus on the transitions, the delivery, 
and make sure it all flows smoothly. So, so most of it for you is is, is theology. theology at but first. I wrote it in a way. Still, oh, no. yeah. But I wrote it in a way <laughs> that the delivery won't be a problem. You know what I mean? Like so, it's so well, there's some thoughtfulness in there. Yeah. yeah so that way I can transition it when I actually go to say. You're a natural wordsmith, though. So I, like for you, I don't. Th I feel like for Joe, the delivery probably doesn't take as much effort as it does for the average guy. I think. Uh, yeah. The poop pie was just amazing. Yeah. Turd pie. I'm sorry. Uh, it was theologically, it was the best thing you said, <laughs> and I don't even. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't watched that yesterday's yeah, sermon yet. You're turd pie. There's a turd pie. Yeah. Second service turd pie. Yeah. I'll have uh, to make sure that's the one I watch. Uh, but yeah. I will say, so I, I, that's why I said it's kind of unfair. But I've we've written enough sermons that I'm writing it in a way. So when I go to work on the delivery, I'm not like, how does this transition? Well, I wrote it in a way that I can make the transition. But when I you will first say, write it, are you thinking delivery at all? Um, or just like very little and you're just wanting to get material down almost yeah. zero yeah almost zero because that's true really um, that's you too you yeah, same way yeah, yeah. that's true Al almost yeah. no I delivery i start with a bunch of concepts ideas thoughts develop those and then i will go back through and change the the order in which they're yeah like, towards the yeah, end sure. i changing the sequence yeah, yeah i write the manuscript well. out and then because i'm gonna remember i'm gonna do no notes Right, so, so really, manuscript. that's right. Yes. So when I write it all out because of no notes, now the delivery is really focused on Sunday because I'm not memorizing all of that. Yeah. So now I'm really thinking through, and that actually helps a lot because basically your brain's saying you can't remember everything, so that actually helps. Kind of just has this natural trim when I work it, and I do preach it on Sunday morning at least once uh, before I'm on stage, yeah. and that's why yeah, I figure yeah. out where it's kind of clunky or not. I so. don't. I'm so. I I dislike disjointed sermons so much. Like I hate when somebody just like and that point's done. Now let's move on. I <laughs> hate a, that kind those of stuff. Those really those cold transitions. Yeah, point I, number and three. That's it. I'm so I I want so badly to be able to weave together like a set where it's like there is yeah. just this beautiful thread that runs through all. Those are my favorite. Yeah. And I, I I realize I don't think anybody out there cares. I found that out uh, a long time. Ago. Some of you us care. So? Yeah, I would for care. sure. Okay. Because I would care. Okay. Because if you haven't made your point well enough for somebody to know that you're moving sure. on to the next one and you have to say point number 3, sure. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. I hate yeah. that so much. I hate it. But there is some of the element sorry. of of gifting where sorry. even if you kind of did this <laughs> if you've done this a lot and this is kind of your gift you can not work on the transition. Some people, just in the moment, they're reading the room uh -huh. and they can transition really well. Yeah. I, I'm not that good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I have to kind of actually think through how am I going to move to the next points. But some people can just do it. They're just like, I think it's easier to MC or host something where you have, n there's no plan, right? Yeah. Because then you're only Holy Spirit in the room. That's yeah. it. That's all you're doing. It's the yeah. Holy Spirit in the room. But when you're actually working with material, it's Holy Spirit the room. And material, yeah, and that is not easy. And also remember, because I think I think people screw this up a lot. The Holy Spirit is in the writing of that. Also, 100%. I hate when people Steph are like, "Just let the Spirit lead," yeah. and I'm like, "You realize while I'm preparing on a Sunday yeah. for the next Sunday, yeah, like yeah. that. If I don't have the Holy Spirit in that, what am I doing? That's yeah. the yeah. whole point of this. It used to irritate. This is this was a big thing like 30 years ago in ministry. Guys would say, though, I'm just I'm just not. I don't spend a lot of time preparing because I'm waiting. I just the Holy Spirit's going to do His thing, bro. You you realize the Holy Spirit can do His thing on Monday too if you'll give Him right. space. Why would He yeah. not? Why yeah. would it, it, you think about? what God's will is and goal is for a church service. He wants everybody in that room to have an experience with him. Mm -hmm. That's his goal. We are facilitating that. What, of course he's showing up on Monday when I'm preparing it because he's like, oh, man, I want you to, like, that's part of this great process. So he talk, only shows up if you invite him, though. That's right. Should, uh, talk more about your ratio, by the way. I don't think I got an, a good grasp on What's your ratio? Uh, I probably lead, this is, I, I think 50-50 is the right answer because it makes, it, it sounds the best. I, I actually, because of the way my brain works, I think delivery a lot. I, sure. And it's probably, it's probably more delivery. It, I, it has to be theologically sound. It's yeah, not you're that. Not, you're not, you're not theologically accurate. That's exactly. Not, we've heard you preach. That's not the yeah. issue. But no, your brain goes, time. that's the thing you want to focus on. My my brain really wants I j like you remember when Kev Kevin Hart did I th it was one of his with the videos newer specials with the videos yeah. that's my dream I, I want to do that every so cool. if, I if, agree. If, if I, yeah he basically oh, in his stand up he had like he told the joke about how he took the trash out and the reason this is so memorable is because he had vi visuals with it yeah 
he says, you know, I, I live in this big house and it's got a really long, dark driveway. And the, I mean, the screen behind him is the size of the stage. It's the entire it's, back. It's weird. It's the only part of that I remember, too, because of the visuals. Exactly. So it, this is too. my point. It's the only part I remember that. I remember this So he exact puts story. up this giant, long driveway at night with lights and he talks about how it's dimly lit. And you're seeing it while he's telling this bit. And the bit was fine, but the, vid- the, this, the picture made it. So- and I'm like, if I could spend, you know, 50, 60 hours a week preparing those types of visuals with my sermon that to me would because then i promise you people remember that and they will get used to it but it it will be so memorable i i think of that so much that i'm like i wish i had the time one and the talent to be able to to weave all that together um so i am the concept especially when, when we're going through like the romans right now we take a section of scripture, a few verses to a section, and we go through it. The theology's in it. It's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not even that much work, especially with a book like Romans. I've read Romans more than any it's other book the in the how. Bible. The and like, I've, Romans is, the, is probably the book I am most familiar with. So John, John would be mine. Is it John? Mine is yeah. Romans. Mm-hmm. And so too. going through it, I'm like, I've preached on this probably a dozen times already. I know where I want to go. There's new stuff now. And so like, I just read a study from 2022 from a guy and it's called the three worlds of evangelicalism. And I'm like, that's the, the opening of my sermon. And so I'm like trying to weave new things in with it. And I, I want to be able to carry these things through. So the delivery part for me is pretty heavy. It's cool. Well, it's, I think it's uh, neat. I, 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 I like it. it. And I will say this too, like you have a good theological base already. Yeah. Hopefully. So that's yeah. not double it's not. And 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 we know this. Sermons <laughs> are fingerprints. They are so unique. Preaching, right. everybody has such the prep. Yeah. I actually it's funny we're talking about this. I have been to different things where they walk through prep and however it does it. I was in a room with 50 guys. Nothing was alike. No. Like it's crazy how different it is. I know. It's like everyday principles, obviously they're making yeah. points and stuff like that, but it's it's all different. So you're saying deliver, I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's very different for everybody. And you can tell by looking at notes. Your notes compared to my notes compared to Floyd's notes look totally different. Yes, they do. And they're so, <laughs> and they really are to us. Huh? Like notes, like I'm not, my yeah. notes aren't meant to be printed. My notes no. are meant right. to be, they're yeah. memory triggers I, for me. I used to get people that would ask me like, hey, can, can I get a copy of your notes? And I'd be like, absolutely not. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to never share it. I, I Like I just jumped back 20 years. Now I don't care. Like, yeah, right. just know. That half the stuff I said isn't in there. What were you uh, like insecure about it? Were you self conscious about the? I, I a little bit, I'm sure, was part of it. But then part of it was the like, it's not going to make sense to you, yeah. right? And you're you're wanting to replicate the sermon, and it, that's not going to happen based yeah. upon the notes. And we know this too, right? We can come in with the same set of notes for two services that oh are an gosh. hour and a half apart, and they're totally different. Yeah, uh, our they, ser- the, our sermons from from one service to the next are night and day different. Yeah. They look so different. It's which to me is a blast. Yes. Sometimes between services, like first and second service, something just happens and you feel like a nudge in the first service and you're like, all right, I'll share that in this service. Like yeah. it's just sometimes it's different. Yeah. So so I want to hear your yeah, perspective from a worship pastor. Yeah. What are you primarily concerned with percentage wise? Is it the mechanics of the set? Or is it the the song selection, musicality, the bringing the spirit yeah, into that? The Where first, does your brain go? Well, the f- it's it's weird for percentage or proportion. It's more priority, and so priority wise, the first thing I do is I'll read through the notes, the scriptural references, and just pray about it. Like, okay. Lord, what are you revealing through this? What is the theme? And, you know, on top of obviously your maybe you might have a title and that you're building yeah. off of. And or the points you're making, and even the questions, just to get yeah. like, like, Lord, if it's your will, it's this song. My questions come last, by like, the way. Plant uh, well, the I change always. them all week long, Me and they too. change Me all too. the time. But yeah. s- what's crazy is sometimes it lines up anyway, yeah. or yeah. based on what, uh, or during the time of silence. But now it's like the prayer time, or what Scott is is sharing, um, and I'll notice that that will change based on the worship. Like, and so do you try, and I'm going to cut you off about a hundred times because I'm so intrigued by this. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if we're preaching on grace, mm-hmm. do you specifically go and like, okay, here's the 10 songs I have about grace. I'm going to use grace songs good or question. like, how, how do you do it? It's, it, it could be. Yeah, it could be. It's, uh, I think it's more, I think that can be very, a one dimensional. I mean, it's not wrong right. route. 
sometimes it's like, what do I, th- what hits me when I think of grace, of God's grace? Okay. Well, how does that, how do you, how do you reconcile that with, if you're feeling like I'm going to pick my songs as I'm spirit led, how would that lead you to new songs? Like, I mean, cause like, sure. I can see how it leads you to songs, you know. Well, cause I, how does I have song kind of like a, this kind of save playlist of songs that we've, uh, Stephanie and other people have shared with me and songs that I've stumbled on. Cause I'll listen through. Uh, different playlists, or because I don't, the, I'm not really exposed to. And the team has like a few dozen in the bank that you're like, I know we, we yeah, have what these. Yeah, what is it? What is several? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah, what's your number? How many? How many songs? Oh gosh, do you guys, that we they probably know? have three dozen now. So, that, so 30, you know, thirty six songs. Okay. And okay. and uh, but lately, like, you know, writing songs. I'm not fast at writing songs. You um, are not. No, and that's uh, a good thing for me. Mm-hmm. And because if I, I feel like if I rush it. I will focus more on what I'm capable of and what I think people want versus uh, how do I really want God to be revealed or speak through this. Yeah. So in that sense of writing, the it is kind of like you guys, yeah. your guys' sermons, laying out just thoughts and ideas. Well, if you um, heard my last couple of songs, you would definitely not think I was thinking about what people wanted. Keep yeah, going. or sermons. Uh, <laughs> sermons or songs? Yeah, sermons. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. They're not, you, they're not what people want. You send them songs all yeah, the so time. I do. Yeah, I do yeah. And and it's funny because then I'll pray on that. I'll be like, "Those are Joe's are." And I know it's not always. Place. It's always. It's not like a hey, play the song. No, but it's I like, that. why does this hits him for a certain reason? Yeah. And so then it might be in a month, you know. And uh, I kind of picture you singing them. That's why I send them to you. Oh. Huh. That's what yeah. it, that's what it is. I picture you. They're not just. I not just. I like them. I hear them. I go. Oh, I hear Josh. Ash, yeah, it's funny. Ashley sends me sent me a song recently that she's like. This song was made for Josh. Like oh. th- this song was like Josh's voice, yeah. Josh's style. What was it? I'll send it to you. Okay. It was. She could th- send it to me. What's funny is I I heard it and I told her I was like send that to Josh because it's a gorgeous song. Just a song? Is it a worship song or just a song? So it it is. Uh, it's both. Hmm. I she released it I think as a christian song she she's one of those like christian artists who sings about everything but all her songs definitely have a, oh, a it's christian a, bend. a female vocalist yeah that's always intriguing to me and it well she has a she has a a, a tenor type voice it's, right. it's a deeper but uh, she says it's, it's, the song was made smoker. for me yeah i mean yeah. and she sent it to me and i i was like oh you're so right oh it wow is, it sounds it, like you it's huh. it's got a little bit of that like well now i want to know what song it is. I, I'll, I'll send it to it's the like thread. rob zombie singing zombies Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, in regards to that, again, that's not, I'm not a good answer. Percentage wise, it would probably be 52, 48. You know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, on and which so, side? Uh, 52, like uh, theologically, um, spiritually, spiritually so led. A little heavier on, and this, then on the. Okay. The mechanics is more like kind of a template. And then, like, it's good. Usually the upbeat and bring it down. But I haven't been following that as much. Yeah. That mechanical part. It's like this last worship was much more. And a lot of them lately, I just feel like it's a season of just more contemplative because people are, I think people need that right now. And um, yeah, that, that's our lane. Joe and I have talked about this recently that uh, one thing that we all fall into this trap of like, uh, like the attractional model, like we want to give people what they want. We want to entertain them a little bit, which no, that's not bad, by the mm-hmm. way. I do not think right. entertaining someone is a negative thing. Uh, but our wheelhouse is spirituality. Right. Like th- th- we're the church for crying out loud. We're, right. we're leading you closer to God. You yeah. could not be entertained and have the best Sunday of your life because God showed up. I think right. we've made so. a big shift because originally we, we merged. We talked about like wanting it to be fun. And I think we found a principle. We still want it to be fun. But we want it to be spiritual. Yeah. Like, Number that's the, one, that's spiritual. The, and I think we always talked about fun, yeah. authentic. And I think over these last two years, we've been like, no, yeah. our brand, if you could yeah. say, forgive me for saying that, is Jesus and spirituality yeah. in the Bible. And that's what we want. And that can be fun. And mm-hmm. if fun happens, and authentic. great. Like, yes. right. I mean, you, and you can, I mean, it's tough because I will often, and I don't know if this is bad, so it's fun to think about. But like like the last few weeks, for, for about Five, six plus chapters of Romans, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. It's hard. Our, mm-hmm. Your last few, my last few, those sermons, this and sermon, for seven uh, more sections, chapters. Yeah, chapters. This sermon actually oh, man, chapter two. Uh, yeah. is the most convicting, harsh sermon I've preached in I don't know how long. Oh, well, it's scary. It is Wait, rough. Worse than the last one? Yeah. It, it, it is. I'm it's sick. all in that same vein, right? It's all in that same vein. So I immediately, with that text, go, 
can I lighten this? Yeah. Can I make this fun? And I genuinely felt like God was like, no, 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 I want conviction. And I was like, ho, ho, let's do this. I, I, was, I wanted to ask you, uh, the, yeah, the last couple of times, and this is, this is directed to you, mm-hmm. I've noticed that... Your zipper was down. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot. And, and it was fun. Um, I By noticed like, like, hey, that was a fun time. It's, it's about to get, it's not going to be fun. I, I'm curious why, like, I know that generally that'd be like, it make, brings levity. Um, what do you think about saying, like, it's going to get more fun? Like, leaning into it. And instead of saying, I don't know. Because I feel like when you're switching it to negative, it kind of sets a perspective of, like, oh, he's right. This is not as fun. It's funny because I'm, oftentimes, I'm trying to do the opposite. Sure. Like, if, 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 oh, okay. if, you, if you know you had to do 100 push-ups, you're like, all right, let's do this. But I say, if I said, like, hey, we're going to do some push-ups, and you do 10, and you're like, is that enough? And it's like, nope. Yeah. You're like, and you, you, I don't know how many I'm supposed to do, and I'm wearing out. Mm-hmm. If, I, if you have that in your head already, like, all right, buckle up. Like, we're going to talk about some heavy things. You've prepared yourself. You're more open to it now. Okay. Uh, and I'm not saying that's, that's right, but yeah. that's what I think of. That's where your brain goes, yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I want to prepare people for, and not always, but not always. Sometimes I really like to, to sneak it in. Yeah. Where it hits you and you're like, oh, oh God, yeah. what was that? Yeah. Uh, but this week especially, because I'm, I'm saying at one point, like, I wanted to lighten this. Mm. I wanted to crack it. Because you can make anything funny. It's not that hard. And so I'm like, I wanted to lighten this up. I wanted to do it. I genuinely felt like God is saying, I want my people to feel conviction because I think they need to shift. And I went, yeah. geez, man, that's, that's a brutal that's realization. I, I get went, that. All right, let's we, do it. We can't always be the person in the room when things get deep, they crack a joke because they can't handle the 100%. intensity. Mm-hmm. And we've always, we've, we've always kept it light. So this, yeah. this, these first seven chapters aren't light. They are not. I get and that. So if we try and make Paul's them light, not joking around in the right, slightest. Right. This is not. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> but Paul, there is a there is a there's a light at the end of this tunnel. Unfortunately, we're just a long way away from it. Yeah, I I understand. But that's I think, what draws you to God. And I, that's that's the real. Sorry to cut you off, but that's the realization I had when doing this. How dare you? That's <laughs> we never do that on this podcast. That's that's what brings you to this place that that it, where chapter eight rings so beautiful. Mm. That's the whole point of You've it. The sat entirety of it is. Is awesome. Yeah. You, in his you, mind, it's one thought. Yes. Right. So we're we're breaking it down. Yes. But in his mind, he knows later on he's getting to what he's going to say. In and I three. genuinely believe until you realize how desperately you need a savior, this doesn't work well. Yeah. Right. If I think in any way that like I'm a pretty good person, then I don't do Christianity well. Yeah. I'm really missing the mark. He's literally encapsulating. We're going through this where every there's nobody gets away. Nope. This is this is the. This is the family guy social commentary where everybody's fair game, right? Yeah. We're not just picking on one group. We're no. picking on everybody. Everybody's and that's what he's doing. He's like, he's like everybody. Yeah. In case you're thinking we're pointing the finger at one person, we're not. Yeah. In fact, even in chapter two where he's like, you're like, oh, did you, did you feel good like I judged those people? He's like, are you judging them? Yeah. Because now. That's this part. My, my ju- part is. You can't judge. Very much the, oh, yeah. you're, you're religious and you've done a great job. You're leading the blind to light. Right. You've done so well. However, and then he just crushes right. your soul. You know, I think actually in my question before, I oh, think sorry. what I realized so um, from the position or from receiving the sermon from the pastoral figures, there's a sense of authority. And the, uh, I guess it's like, I'm used to the pastor being the arbiter of the conviction, and Ooh. that's not true. It's right. the spirit. Right. And so I think that actually switched my perspective. And I took it as like, hey, guys, this isn't going to be fun for you. And the reality is, and I get that reverse psychology yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. adding levity, but instead it's like because I've read through it and I'm just as convicted as you oh, may feel. Yeah. So that, yeah. that, that's good. that makes sense to me. That's exactly what th- – this was – personally the most convicted i've been in a long time yeah because i think i got a little self-righteous i got a little bit you had touched on it a little bit this this, this last week and i will this week again which mm-hmm. is like i'm pretty good yeah i mm-hmm. haven't robbed a bank this week right. like i you yeah. know i'm doing pretty well i didn't murder somebody like i'm doing and then no matter how many times i wanted to yeah but then he just reminds you murder like heart. that actually makes you worse in fact they're better off not having the law Mm. because they're still doing good yeah. without the law you're a piece of trash because you have the law right. and you're still so you're just like oh man yeah the law within you that that was Dang. an interesting verse it's, it's so baller it's so 
beautifully written mm-hmm. that it's it's fun to go through. I will say in Romans, my overall following has been more pure through preaching through this. Yeah. And and I think my life and other people's lives are better. Like it's not yeah. just like, oh, I'm pure. Yeah. It's yeah. like no. What do you mean following? Um just following Jesus. Like oh, like oh. literally literally seeing all the things that are damaging my life and other people's lives that I've kind of said, no, nah, that like we said in, in the sermon, like it's not it's not that big a deal. I'm just doing this. And yeah. I've been way more like no, it actually kind of is. It's it's an erosion. Yeah, it, I'm thinking You're it's right. not a bullet wound. It yeah. doesn't it doesn't have to be a bullet oh, wound. Wow. It, it's yeah. an erosion. It's yeah. just slowly eroding. Me. I've I've been try I've tried to be so much more mindful of snarky comments and stuff to where I'm like I don't want to poke fun at at any of our staff or individuals because uh, I didn't realize how bad that could hurt. And then hmm. little stuff will sneak out and it hit, it get, I, I catch it quick now where I'm like, oh, don't really. Don't I forgave that. you though. And so that's, thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. He waited uh, until I left. That's right. I, I think we've been doing this <laughs> that's for true. an hour and a half. Yeah, I think we're. That's been a great time. Yeah. I think in that erosion, I, I like that because when I think of like sharpening each other, yeah. iron sharpens iron, it's either through honing or removal of material. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of mentally and simple. Um, how about some how about some would you rather let's sure bring, let's bring some levity to it. <laughs> yeah the thing we said we weren't gonna do let's do it <laughs> now it's about to not get fun uh would you rather be famous for something you didn't do or un be unknown oh. for something great you accomplished oh i we know this is your actually a great would you rather for this conversation i couldn't take credit for something i didn't do i couldn't do it i would there's no way if somebody was like oh my gosh could you let credit go for something that you did yeah Wait, yeah, so uh, sure. how about, do, is there a version of the credit you didn't do? I'm trying to think. Of, when I was thinking, I'm like, okay, is this just purely like you, you, your friends who claimed to win the golf tournament, right? Oh, yes. Where you're clearly like, you know you didn't do this. Yeah. Or something just somehow has been associated or with you. Or could you say like, yeah. like uh, Jill brought me to Christ or is that with the spirit led you? I'm just trying to think, you. is there any version of this other than just the worst version, which is, you yeah. invented something, and you're like, I actually didn't. And everybody's yeah. telling me I did. I can't think of a different, because that was I where my mind went. I was trying to figure if there's version, because if it's that version where like it's when like. when you say something really good in a sermon, and Joe gets credit for it. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. All the time? It happens it, a lot. It happens a lot. I get I, the Bible credited to me. I've, I've taken But that's the spirit <laughs> leading them. <laughs> that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've credited Paul as Joe. That's true. Uh that that is easy. If someone were to say like, "Oh my gosh, that se- that sermon you preached on homosexuality, Ryan, like that was amazing," I couldn't go. Oh, thanks. I'd have to be. Oh, that was Joe. That that last. Are you talking about a few weeks ago? Like that was Joe who preached that sermon. Yeah. It was a great sermon. I couldn't. I that would. I couldn't sleep at night. I would yeah. feel like an idiot. Tie, dude. tie money to it. Is it different if there's a monetary value attached to this? If it's an mm. invention that somebody else gets paid for that you created. Uh, yeah, I'd probably go after him mm-hmm. if it was like intellectual does property not or something legally, like that. By the way. <laughs> when you uh, when you get the commissions for like uh, carpentry or blacksmithing, yeah. do you uh, sign everything you do? Yes. Yeah. It's interesting. You I said, mark all you said, with your. You said carpentry, brand. right? But yeah. I always yeah. go to carpentering. Do you mean carpentry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't. Uh, is anybody anybody here? It. Go we'll read the question again. Just uh, would you rather be famous for something you didn't do, or be unknown for something great you accomplished? Is there anybody here that could take credit for something they didn't do? Yeah. That, that uh, seems tough. Millie Vanilli is like the cautionary tale. They weren't singing those songs, yeah. and, and it just so it old. ruined them. Isn't it funny too? It ruined them that, as humans. That I feel like you will get found out. There's like. The Bible oh. talks about everything will be brought to light. You're looking yes. over your shoulder the rest of your life. And yes. Sometimes I feel like you might even die the, and be like, you die thinking that I mean, it's at false. some point they're figuring it's it out. It's literally false witness. The it's fear terrible. of being known has to, like, of being, if it being found out has to be crippling. Like, you live your life without joy because, oh, are they going to find out? Like, right. You're how right. That, how much is that? How much, how much do you experience as a parent? Sorry, Josh. Um, to your nine kids you don't talk to. I know. Uh, I'm a bad parent. How much of it is a parent that you're living without credit? Your kids will come home and share something with you that's a revelation that oh, yeah. you told them. Oh, no, I take credit all <laughs> the time. Yeah, exactly. I've been telling you that for 30 yeah, years. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any version where you could take credit for something either. you didn't do. I, I, I think I think you'd just be... It, I think it, I think it'd kill you. I, I, yeah, I, I think, think you'd if live you tried a horrible to do life. it, yeah, it'd be terrible. Granted, like, imagine coming on a show and somebody saying to me, Joe, you're the one who built this amazing architectural structure. I'd right. be like, 
<laughs> oh, I would never yeah. do public appearances. I'd be like, I would never want to talk about this. You know what? A throwback to the very beginning of this. I bet a narcissist could do it no problem. Because I bet they could justify how Somehow. they could take credit for it. Yeah. So I bet you there is something in certain people. They're giving me credit because be I deserve it, it even yeah. though I didn't do it. I'm so yeah, great. They're giving me credit for stuff I didn't do. I mean, do. I did tell that other guy. It's the, it's the Bill Burr joke about uh, Steve Jobs. It's like everybody talks about Steve Jobs like he's the end all. He's like, yeah. he walked in a room to a bunch of nerds and was like, make this thing. They're the ones who did it. Yeah. He didn't do anything. Didn't and do so it. I think that's such a funny. Yeah. And, and he walked away and was like, yeah, I'm the end all. Mm. Never gave credit to one engineer, one like programmer. Never said anything about the guys who actually made it happen. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because you're a narcissist. Yeah. So uh, have you ever taken, not taken credit, been given credit? And then the moment you're like, it doesn't matter. This isn't that big a deal. They felt like they had some big moment. They attached it to me. And I'm just like, I'm just letting it ride because of the, because I don't care about it. I'm not like, oh, I need to have that credit. Yeah. But in the moment, it didn't feel right to correct them into that thing. You ever had a moment like that? Uh, I watched it happen. I'll tell you that to somebody. Uh, we, we jokingly, it was a golf tournament, speaking of again. Uh, on the front nine of Riverside, I shot a 38, by the way. That's three over par, which is my, my back best nine? front hey, row. Joe, we don't talk about the back When nine. you shot a 38, the front of Riverside, <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, we were in a golf tournament, and my buddy hits a golf ball, and it was a par three, so it's closest to the pin. It was that hole. And so my other buddy ran up and grabbed the card and lied on it as a joke and was like, he put like six inches or something. He says half thinking it was going to get beat. The other half was if it doesn't, this will be hilarious when they call his name. And this was a church fundraiser. And they call his name and we're like, is he going to take this award? And he took it and he came back and he was so mad. And he goes, I couldn't say, he goes, do you know, they don't get that type of humor. Like nobody else in that room. Our table would have thought it was hilarious if somebody walked up and they're like, my idiot friends did this. Like, yeah, everybody in that room would be like, What? Your friends did what? Like, they would not have been funny. Yeah. So he ended up see that. taking the award, and it was just a, a fun award with, like, a box of golf balls or yeah. something. And and we were dying yeah. laughing. And so I watched that, and we never let him live that down. Yeah. We think that's the funniest thing in the world. I had a lady come crying. I'll tell the whole long story. But anyways, I looked just like the speaker. Oh, the yes. And she came crying, talking yes. about what, what I said meant so much to her. And yeah. she's like, and I'm like, she's like, thank you so much. I go. You're welcome. And I hugged her. Yeah, that's a good example of yeah. what's the point. It yeah. didn't matter. It, you don't get anything from it. It's not like she's like, can you come and speak at and this next like, thing? And I'm just like, oh, yeah, my gosh. Not, yes, I am. Like, yeah. You're welcome. Oh, he did. Sure. He yeah. got three gigs. Out that, is, that is, yeah. That's funny. All right. Got another one? Uh, would you rather eat nothing for three days or 12,000 calories a day for three days? Oh. Oh, nothing. I think nothing. I, Twelve thousand calories, I think, is easier. Could, than I think I died. Twelve thousand calories. Ate, is so how many? How much McDonald's is twelve thousand calories? Just, so I'm I thinking, was, like, if I just go to like the fattiest foods, couldn't I just do that for three days? Like, I do aren't there really heavy? Is a lot. Six times the prescribed amount. Does right? it include what you drink? Oh shoot! How many calories are in a Big Mac? I thought twenty one hundred. Eight hundred. Yes. Eighteen hundred. Five hundred sixty three. So I'd have to do a lot of Big Macs. Oh, the Macs. Big Mac is the small. It's a lot oh, of Big yeah. Mac, dude. That I was I was thinking it yeah, was like a it thousand. In, does it include what you drink? Because if you could drink like sugary soda, I don't even know if I could do that. No, that would make me sick. Yeah, it would make me sick. I I don't. It's I, basically, do you want to be sick for three days? I was thinking. For three I was days. thinking twelve thousand calories would be easier than I think. No, but maybe not. What's the longest yeah. you fasted? That seems very personal. Not, not very long. I'll be honest. Oh. <laughs> I don't fast well. Yeah, if I twenty four hours is probably. I, I think I did a four. I did. I did. I've, I did I've, a forty eight hour fast for a, a discipleship thing I did years oh, okay. ago. Was it just water or or, or everything? Just water. Yeah, okay. I, I could drink fast. water. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pure fast probably. Which I got caffeine headaches is the only thing that I really yeah. had an issue with was the caffeine because I was suck. Like, Hungry, hungry. I carry enough fat around that I'm like, I could eat off Hungry's my fine. body for a while. That's fine. But when you do the caffeine, head, it, that hurt. That, that headache was real. Yeah. I was, I was hurting. Yeah. Pure fast is, is uh, probably three days. Now I include black coffee in a pure yeah, fast. Yeah. A lot without, of people do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but with uh, like um, protein shakes, a protein shake a day, I've done uh, five days. That's not okay. fast, That's though. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's not. I've done. It was for me. It wasn't a physical thing. It was a spiritual thing. I was. It was when I was a youth pastor. Yeah. And I had. There were several of us actually. Brian Hansen was one of them. Yeah. Um. We we fasted, but felt like it was 
because of that, it was wise to I did yeah, sustain for almost yourself. A, for about a year straight, if not more, I fasted for 24 hours every Tuesday. That's when we had our college group at night. And so I fasted for 24 hours and I broke my fast with the meal afterwards with the group. With them, that's pretty cool. And I was like, I, I got a lot out of it. Mm, I yeah. just, it was, it was a neat time yeah. where I'm just like, I did I, it. I was very mindful. I did a couple year stretch of doing so. I've done, I've done more than three. You fasted days. for a couple years. Uh, once a week, oh, 36 oh, hours. I thought you, 36, I, I thought you what's fasted. The, what's a half of hours. a day and a half? 18. 36. Is that 36? Oh, a day, day and a half. half. Yeah. yeah so did that, and and then I did a nine day fast with a glass of juice only in water. Oh, you did glass of juice for nine days. Oh my yeah. god! I've heard uh, that broth one where people drink like a broth. I don't know what, what broth it is, mm-hmm. but like, well, they'll do that and they can sustain that for a while. I would mm-hmm. like to see the twelve thousand calories laid out. Me too. To that see like to get an idea. Of, it sounds like a job though. Yeah, it does. Like you're, you're, you're scheduling that's a, eating. That's the Michael the, Phelps diet. That's like, exactly what I thought. He was I doing. thought Michael like Phelps. Yeah. Five hundred for the four calories an hour every hour around the clock. Five hundred calories an hour. A big that's Mac three thousand calories per every person. hour for Pretty twelve each hours each straight. No, to, you have to eat twelve thousand. I was just saying that we lay it out and we all wait. Wait, have he a said big meal. <laughs> wait, no, he said it's twenty four hours. A big Mac an hour for twenty four hours. No, it's 24. so you're not sleeping. Oh no, it is 24. Yeah, oh shoot, 24. it's 24 hours. I don't, I don't, calories I don't, an hour I don't think I could do hours. it. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. No yeah, way. There's no way because that's like the fattiest thing I could think of. I can't think of anything think that's more than like. A, oh, there's a, way a quarter, more. Uh, I think the double quarter pounder. The quarter pounder is more calories, or the double quarter pounder. I think is more calories. I think I died. But still, one but an this, hour. Yeah, one an hour is rough. I'm thinking about like especially After hour you, six. It, it would have to be like ice cream because think about okay, Ben and Jerry's. That's ten Ben and Jerry's ice creams. I feel like a day. if a tiger ate me, I'm twelve thousand calories. I would. I, die. You're probably not that much. Yeah. Probably I not. honestly think it'd be easier to do the fast. Yeah. I yeah. think the eating would be. Harder. I don't know. I'm, I've done day fast. I've also I'm seasons of life where I just unintentionally <laughs> fasted, but it wasn't like That's a, not fasting. It, it wasn't fasting. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't it's, not eating. It's, and it's oh, hard. It's this, not reading the word. Not, this may not be as tough as I thought. Uh, highest calorie. Foods, so the the oh. pepper grinder pub burger from c- Covers. Okay, Cute, we'll just Col- we'll Culvers is oh, yeah t- over twelve hundred. The bacon king at Burger King is seventeen hundred. Yeah, but you eat one of those, you're Whoa, done for the day. Really, seventeen hundred. But then you got like here's where Joe could do twelve thousand without batting an eye are the shakes. The shakes. So the good. Oreo Reese's peanut butter shake from Sonic is seventeen twenty. I could do that. That's you what I mean. You like, polish off you, shakes like no one I've can, ever known. It's if phenomenal. You can drink a, if you can drink so it, so nine of those. No, no, how many? No, six of those. Yeah, Twelve, seventeen hundred. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not. <laughs> I love them with math. Math. Eight. Eight. This, this guy is math. Eight. I'm so bad. Uh, but it's funny. There are so many but shakes you, you and drinks that are fifteen hundred calories. You'd still be sick to your stomach. Yeah, yeah. Drinking that much shake. Yeah. Even you, one large shake. I'm even like, if you oh. just said shake to burger, do that two times. Like you, well, if you, you have, like, a, if you have a seventeen. So think about like the meal at Portillo's. That oh, oh I will think about it a lot. How dare you? But if I eat that meal in the morning, did no, you guys I'm not go go you were there? We did, but now if we I do the big some. beef, a dog, cheese fries, and a cake shake, I'm mad because I'm genuinely not hungry. Without, That's probably three thousand calories. We, what's funny is if you think about it, three thousand. We just did that. I had the the jumbo the jumbo burger. The jumbo big dog. beef, jumbo, jumbo dog, sorry, and the big beef. I didn't have. I had like two bites of shake, so that doesn't count. But um, and fries, the cake cheese shake. fries, oh. cake shake, uh, the cheese and fries. didn't eat until about twenty four hours later. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. truthfully, like yeah. we didn't touch anything. They had lunch. We had all the meals, and I was like, I can't. I just okay. so Steph and I, when we went on the cruise in February, we went because the place where we stayed was like I don't, I, we were we were driving to the hotel, and I'm like, oh, we're cor- we're close. Like, so I pulled it up on the map. We were like four miles away. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be great. She didn't enjoy it as much as I did. Oh. And I didn't enjoy watching her as much as Joe enjoys watching us. But it yeah, was I don't think Ashley would care. So we split everything. Yeah. And still, it's 12 hours, 18 hours before you eat again. Yeah. So oh, would yeah. you rather eat nothing for three days? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to yeah. have to go with the fast. Just because I don't I'd think I could that. do the other one. Can I drink soda? No. Water. That, hey, I'm, I'm choosing rough. it from. I'm getting headaches. Those I'm gonna headaches get, are real. Yeah. I will. And say, what's funny is ibuprofen did nothing to the headache. Nothing. Oh, no, you nothing. broke your I fast like, with ibuprofen, <laughs> dude. I was in pain, and it did not. It doesn't help. Yeah, I did. I did a Daniel fast and went from liter- literally the night before. I had a vanilla, a vinte vanilla latte in one hand and a quad espresso in the other, 
And then I started a Daniel fast the next day. How many days is that? Is that 30? 20, 21. 21. 21. You're eating. So you've, you've you're broke, you're eating. You you're broke your to addiction ketosis. to caffeine and you still went back to it? No, no. I'm saying the night before I started the fast, I did that. Don't you go yeah, into ketosis saying, after a few so days? And so the, the yeah, amount of pain short. that I – that was a Sunday morning. I was okay Sunday morning. I started feeling nauseous Sunday night. The amount of pain that I was in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from my caffeine – Cold That's turkey. what I mean. That's what I mean. After 21 days, oh. you broke the caffeine addiction. I was say, did, did you? Yeah. Did, did you still go back? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that 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 uh, that dude who kicked caffeine and talks about like how amazing it was to not be on caffeine, and then when he started drinking caffeine, and he did it for over a year, if I'm not mistaken. So he was done with caffeine. Yeah, clean. Was this on Rogan? Uh, might have been. I, I remember seeing And he something. talked about how the first cup of coffee he had after that year, he was like, it was euphoria. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I saw the world more clearly. Colors were brighter. Like he goes, limitless. that's a legit drug. Caffeine is. And it I was is. I was laughing. I'm like, dude, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, the, the I, I still struggle because I three days without food doesn't seem like that big of a deal at all. I, the three days without food I don't think would bother me as much. But if Josh is making us drink only water. It is only water. I can't have it's black only coffee. water. No, no coffee. Black yeah. coffee. It's, There's water. it's water yeah. only. So I know guys that eat sunflower seeds while they fast. Are we gonna do this? Should we start this tomorrow? That's right. Do you guys want to start? I'll uh, do the twelve thousand. You guys do the. I'll try it. So <laughs> oh, you would pick twelve thousand. No, I'm picking the fast. All right, let's do it tomorrow. We're gonna start tomorrow. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining I'm us. And you want to so hate glad it? I quit. I'm Josh. I'm Ryan. I'm Floyd. I'm uh, the Shakesmeister. What was the thing he went to? The, the with the burger meister meister burger. No, he did with the lightsaber creator guy. He's the the hacksmith. Thank you. That's me. What?